We don't have to fight We don't have to kill Everybody in the whole wide world Really just needs to chill No, we don't have to fuss No, no, no We don't have to fight Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Just Chill with Oliver George This is episode number 92 And today I have a guest who is another person that walks that majestic musical path in life But before we get into it, I want to remind you If you're watching this on YouTube right now And you would prefer audio only You can get that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio and other places like that. If you were listening to me on one of those platforms, though, and you didn't realize that there was a visual side to this thing, please come check it out here on YouTube. If you do come over to this side, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. You do not have to, but it really does help me out. So if you're just jumping in now or you've been supporting me for a long time, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me. If you want to reach out to me, maybe you got a cool guest idea or some general feedback about this show, you can hit me up on social media or send me an email at justchillpodcasting at gmail.com. While you're doing that, let me know if you have interest in one of these hollow foil stickers with the show's logo, and I will mail you one free of charge. Now, back to the guest, the man of the hour, as I mentioned already. He's a unique blend of, I guess I would call it folk rock, alt folk, uh, is really, really captivating stuff. He's released over 15 different releases to date in the last 20, 23 years, I yeah, believe it is. Something like that. And uh, he goes by the artist named Graven, and you can get his music wherever you find music, including his new album, Simple Complex, which features Joel Plaskett, of all people. I'm talking about the one and only Maddie McKechnie. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Hey, thanks so much, Oliver. Thank you for having me, man. We were uh, back and forth for a while trying to set this up, and I'm glad it finally panned out. Well, me, I, me too. I just wanted to see this place. I'd seen some <laughs> videos, and I wanted to see the essence of of the comic and, you know, story character vibe that's going on down in this pop room. culture explosion, super yeah. pop culture explosion. It's ta it's taking me back. My eighties child mind is exploding right now. So Are we, we must be similar it. in age. I'm thinking. I think so. 76 is when I was born. <laughs> Oh, I you're saying you're I am, 76. I as am a, 76 as a years old. Yeah. Oh, 70. Okay. So you're I'm actually like, uh, nine years older than me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, I don't know. Well, what then that's that a compliment to you that I thought we yeah. were the same age group. People, you know? uh, I mean, people date in that age range. So yeah, we, yeah, we, we, exactly. we, could, we could be in a relationship together. Maybe. <laughs> sure. Yeah. If a few things were different. Yeah. Um, but no, you're right, though. This is long overdue because certainly recently we've had a couple back and forth to trying to set this up. But mm. I actually, when you messaged me, found an old message in Facebook. I you had I actually reached out to me like, I want to say it was four months into us doing the show before Strombo had come on. So I knew you weren't coming mm. at me just because we had a big name oh, on no. here. That's so cool. yeah, really, this is really long overdue. Yeah, for sure, man. And and we are actually, we live in the same neighborhood, which it's is true. crazy. Like, like down the street. It's like a kilometer and 1.2 clicks or something like that. So it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, so, no, I'm glad we could finally do this. Me too, man. Thanks so much. This is great. You've got a great space and a great vibe going and everyone out there should uh, subscribe to Oliver. Thank just you. Chillin'. Yeah, I keep telling them. Some of them do it, but <laughs> I was just giving you a free promo there. Just chilling with Oliver George. You say just chilling, and that actually makes me think I've been trying to come up with a, uh, you know, how people will have like names for their podcast listeners, yeah. like Armchairies, of course, is yeah, Armchair yeah. Expert. And for a while, Smartless. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, Chili's is pretty much the only way I can go. Because Chili's chi is cool. We talked about children, but that sounded condescending or a culty almost. Yeah, that's true. Welcome, my children, <laughs> <laughs> to another episode. Yeah, then you get into trouble. But if it's Chili's, people might show up at your door expecting nachos or something. Oh, I was thinking like, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's what it make, yeah. makes me go to, so. Yeah, that's, yeah. Maybe we'll just stick with no name for that. RHCP. Yeah, they bring it. Yeah, you're a fan? I, I, yeah, he was a fan <laughs> was. for a long time. I feel like no, that's where I everyone still is. like them. But uh, I, after a while, I was, I sort of got tired of every lyric and every song being about Southern California, but you know. Oh, I was going to say the opposite that in, in, well, not the opposite, but I was going to take it a different way that in recent years, especially maybe it's because they're getting older. I don't know if it's uh senility or if they're just like comfy and, yeah. but uh, Kiedis especially that his lyrics are just inane, rambly nonsense oh, that rhymes, Yeah, you know, and, and some of the older like se blood sugar, sex magic, I'm sure there was some of that on there, but they had some great lyrics too. They had some great lyrics. And I even loved that one album where, um, I think it was just the one with Dave Navarro. Yeah. One hot minute. Yeah. yeah. And it had aeroplane. Yeah. Like there were song. some great songs on that. My However, friends was on that. Yeah. My friends. Yeah. And they, uh, yeah, that's right. My friends are so, so 
But that that CD, for whatever uh, reason, I'm dating myself here. But that compact disc was uh, <laughs> always in plentiful array at like the beat goes on or any of those used CD places. Like yeah. there was always tons of that because it was panned by specific, critics. Yeah, it really yeah. wasn't. Uh, but I, I actually like that one. No, so. it's not a bad album. It came out in '95, I believe. Yes, and there's some weird shit on there, but there are some solid tracks. Yeah, I don't think it deserved the hate and that it got. Roller coaster, right? Wasn't that on there too? No, um, love roller coaster, which is a cover. Yeah. Um, as well as there's roller a song, um, what's that? Soul to Squeeze. Those oh. were both featured on soundtracks, and Ooh. they were never actually on Chili Peppers albums until oh, later compilation things that brought them in, but. Uh, Soul to Squeeze was on the Conehead soundtrack oh, no of all movies, and uh, Roller Coaster was Beavis and Butthead to America. Oh, that's so funny! I think yeah. uh, Coneheads was the first appearance on film with Chris Farley, if I'm not mistaken. It might have. It was he one was, of his he early was the roles. Boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That Shit, was I before. totally forgot that. Yeah, he was. That was before he sort of. Well, I mean, to be launched. fair, he had a really kind of a short-lived film career. Yeah, you know, he, oh, he, he passed did. away in '97. I want to say he was 33. So yeah, sad. So same young. age as Belushi. Same d cause of death. I know. And I, I, know. I believe he viewed him as kind of an idol from what I've heard. Yeah. Too. I was a huge Chris Farley fan. I actually remember writing a song about him. I, I never did anything with it, but it was, I, I'm pretty sure it was 97 when he died. Yeah. And, December. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, it was very sad. Just sort of, I remember looking forward to every Saturday Night Live with my friends being like, oh, I wonder what Chris Farley's going to do this yeah. week, right? He was just so magical. But, well, not uh, only him, but another person from the cast that was horribly died was uh, Phil Hartman. Yeah, I know. That was Which terrible. Is, and I've too. actually sort of had Phil's brother on this show. Oh, really? He sent in a video question for Kenny Hotz in an episode that I did with him. No but way. I've spoken to, to so Paul cool. many as uh, Phil's brothers. Paul, he has another brother named John, I believe. But Paul's oh, a great guy. He's back in Jamaica now. Uh, I'm so not sure funny. what he does down there. I, I'm sure he grows weed, but uh, I'm sure he does other things as well. <laughs> yeah. He's probably retired Who now. Who doesn't grow weed these days? I mean, come on. So well, like yeah, he's well. He's always been a big advocate, though. Even yeah. long before legalization, he was okay. really a staunch supporter. That's so cool. Um, well, one thing—the first thing I have on my list here. Obviously, I want to get into your musical career, but I gotta ask, Graven, mm -hmm. how did you land on the name? What does it signify to you? I, I later heard the song Graven, which says that it's kind of whatever you want it to be. But there must have been an initial reason that you landed on that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and it is kind of a weird name because for a long time, it's starting to change now as I've been working hard and things are, you know, getting better. But for a long time, when you Googled Graven, you would find about uh, between eight and 10 death metal bands from like Denmark that are all called Graven. <laughs> yeah, I've got that down here. And, yeah. and so I, I like people were like, why did you name yourself that? And I just... I thought of the name because I was walking to school at Guelph when I was going to university there. That's where my dad went to university. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Griffins. There you go. Um, yeah. I was walking to school in this place called the Cow Path, uh, which was, we would lead to the school from the kind of um, a residential area in Guelph. And I was thinking about Graven. I, I grew up Christian and I was thinking about. Um, that word, it's like in the Old Testament, and it would mean sort of anything made by human hands, like an idol or or whatever. And I didn't really want it to mean that because I was like, now I was trying to get away more from religion in my life. But um, I was like, a graven, that's kind of a cool word. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, the word gravity and then the, the word heaven, if you cut them both in half, it's sort amalgamate of the the amalgamates. Yeah, because yeah. It's like as humans, you're sort of stuck in this world because of gravity, but it, heaven or like another world or something, you're always thinking about that. The cosmos. Being. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you ascend. Okay. That's right. So it's kind of that was the impetus for it, and it's sort of stuck. And people have been like, you should just become Maddie McKechnie, singer-songwriter. It's so much easier to market, but I'm pretty You can't stubborn, do that at this you know, point either. Yeah. After so many releases under that no. name, it would be unwise, I think. You've no. built such a following. No, it's true, and I, I, I like it now. It's sort of a joke, and it's like... Um, I have a friend in Winnipeg named Grant who goes by the musical name Slow Leaves. And it's the same thing always. People are like, who, what's Slow Leaves? Like, who are you? But he's like, well, that's just his musical name. So when he performs, 
That's the name that he uses. His real name is Grant, but he goes by Slow Leaf. Same thing yeah. with me. Yeah, I'm Maddie, but I, I go by Graven <laughs> musically. But yeah, so people are always like, do I call you Graven or, or what? But yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, cool. Just Matt, Maddie, whatever. So it's basically just kind of a cool word that you yeah. found some significance in and then exactly. just ran with it. My 25-year-old mind was like, or 24 or whatever, I was like, this seems cool. And now, well, it does sound cool phonetically, yeah. and it also, I think not knowing what it means kind of pulls people in because then they're instantly like, like like I'm doing right now, curious, yeah. you know? No, it's true. It does have a bit of... Mystery. I, I, I like, yeah, I like the mystique in music. Like, I don't like it when things are too on the nose, like whether lyrically or whatever, like if they're right in your face and it's so easy to interpret. Yeah. I like, a, you know, I always liked bands like Pavement, right? Where um, I've heard of them. They would have really interesting artwork on their records and you never, ever, ever saw like really ever I, as much as i can think of any pictures of the band or what they look like you can find out what they look like later online and in magazines and stuff but whenever they put their albums out they never had photos of them or pictures of them which i always kind of liked yeah i mean they had they had some videos i think with them in it but it's sort of like um i sort of like that mystique the sort of mystery and so i always would for a long time would try and make my album covers about nature or something like that because it's sort of inspiring to me and you know as you, opposed to just like a picture of you like yeah you know i've seen too many i mean yeah. for s some people i know they're huge fans and no shade if you are but like ryan adams he's one who a lot of people who like my music would, would like him t as well he's been through some troubles in his life but uh he he would always sort of take these photos where he's like his hands are in his hair and he looks so like tortured on the mm. on the cover of every record he's like leaning over the piano like oh my god <laughs> life is so hard so and yeah, well, speak of bad that. artist names if if ryan. i was ryan adams dude, i'd be I, like dude, uh it's kind of taken basically yeah. <laughs> brian adams has got a pretty good thing going he's, on he had a good thing going long before him yeah right? exactly yeah I know. It's, yeah, I love if I was all of a sudden like Michael Jackson or, you know, anyway, no, that, was, know. that was a terrible example. But <laughs> Michael Jackson. Yeah, I should have picked a real name. I but. think I actually saw Ryan Adams with an X and um, yeah, at Massey Hall. And it was a good show to his credit. Like he's a good musician. But people come to his shows and will yell out, uh, what is it? Run to you? No, no. They'll yell out, oh. play Summer 69 yeah, yeah. at his shows. <laughs> Just to run. And that's kind of, that sucks. You know, that's, yeah, he's that's done bummer. obviously all his life, but. Who are those people who are going to shows, buying a ticket just so they can burn Lame. the guy? <laughs> Lame. So yeah, I'll seems... give that, I'll give that to Ryan Adams. That sucks to have that at every show. Well, and I also saw that you released, uh, put something out that was called the Denmark death metal, like demo x mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To kind of laugh in the face, face of that. Yeah. And you recorded at Raven Street Studios, where I'm a graduate from. That's right. Oh, ages you Ages ago. Yeah, Oh, yeah. funny. I saw I that you were that. friends with Shannon. Yes. And uh, her father, Breen, was still running the school oh, when I went cool. there. So I don't know. He must have passed at this point. He has. Yeah. yeah. Breen was such a great Such guy. a nice guy. Such I a grandpa vibe off that guy. Yeah. I didn't know him super well, but Shannon and I went to the same camp forever called Camp Iowa. It's mm. out near... Um, like Westport, Ontario, about an hour, 20 minutes from here. And, um, yeah, we grew up both going to that camp. She's a little older. Like she's my brother's age, I think like three or four years older than me. So, um, anyways, Shannon has just always been like an older sister. And then she started that studio. And I think in one of my first bands, which was called crushing Shelbyville, I th I, I'm pretty Simpsons sure. Simpsons reference? The yeah, nice. totally. <laughs> okay. With the big sun blocking machine. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Anyways, so. Uh, I was thinking of the lemon tree when I yeah. think of Shelbyville. <laughs> but there was like a big sun blocking machine that Mr. Burns built and then it yeah, yeah. fell over and they're like, hey, that machine fell over and it crushed all of Shelbyville. You just heard <laughs> people screaming. And it's like, it was the town that always was burning up or something was happening, but yet they still survived. You never saw them either. But, yeah. But anyway, um, we recorded some stuff there with just like live off the floor as a, a, a full band. And I remember Shannon was like, you guys could come in and do like an overnight recording session with our, you know, students for free. And so it was a lot of fun. And, and yeah, Shannon and I just stayed in touch over the years. And then as I've been doing music more and more in the last couple of years, that day, the Denmark death metal demos, whatever it's called. I don't even know the name of it. It's my own record. And Denmark I death metal demo, demo Xmas. Xmas. That's yeah. it. And it's like four songs, and I released it during COVID and uh, during the lockdowns, I should say. Um, yeah, it was like December so, 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and right so in the thick of it. 
I recorded some stuff just before COVID hit um, with students at, at Raven Street at Terra, and uh, which is the audio the audio recording academy. Is yeah, what it's called. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was really fun to go in there and sort of experience that for the first time. I was a little nervous because you know you're just thinking about time and when i'm in the studio i'm always thinking about how much time i'm taking like and they're, they're you're kind of on the clock too so oh, i was thinking like how many tracks can i get done yeah with this sweet free studio that's time. right <laughs> so i was doing that so i did four uh uh you know, maybe three or four that time and i only really kept um two of them but but yeah that was really fun to um can i say that's on. a treat like as a former student uh, you know, when you don't have somebody there, I mean, of course, a lot of us were musically inclined, so we would play our own shit sometimes, yeah. but sometimes you get sick of being the performer and it's nice to have someone come in live that you can practice the sound engineering craft totally, with, because man. there were days where we would just mic up the radio just to have like a sound stream to, you know, get our levels and learn the functionality of things, but yeah. so much better when there's a live passionate performer. Oh, doing totally. It. No, it's so true. And it was, it was really fun and the, the students loved it. I met some people in that session that I've become friends with now. And oddly enough, I just went back to Raven Street about, I'm going to say two or three months ago. It was very recent. And Shannon had another opening. And I I rattled off like four songs in a short amount of time. It was like two, two days this time, like just sort of um, four different classes. So I did a song in each class. Oh, cool. And they're all, they all actually turned out very well so i'm going to be releasing them all so oh that's it'll, awesome yeah it'll be really fun that's yeah it's cool. always nice to go back there it reminds me of uh yeah simpler younger age <laughs> right how but long ago did you go there i graduated in 2005 okay so very the 04 cool. 05 year yeah it's only a one-year thing so were you hoping to you know become a studio engineer at some point yeah like i think i didn't really know what i wanted to do after high school i took a year Fair. off and it was really my dad who kind of found that program and ushered me in and said i think this would be good for you and cool. it was a great experience and and actually, like, in a roundabout way, I, for years, I thought, oh, well, what a waste. I, I felt like I wasted my dad's money because I learned some shit, but I wasn't really putting it to use. And then doing this podcast, a lot of that editing, I mean, I'm doing video editing now, too, but some of that still applies. And I found yeah. a lot of it kind of coming back to me a little more naturally than maybe somebody who had never had experience with any of that. Right. right. So it was nice to have some functionality and purpose out of it in the long run. Very cool. Well, hey, give, give it up for Mr. George for pushing the dream. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So George, <laughs> we talked about this before. George is my middle name. Oh, it's George like is middle name. name yeah. Comedy okay, name. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. I didn't know that. But, but it is heartwarming to hear that the dollars didn't all just go poof. Mm. Yeah. You know? that's in right. fact, Ollie could have done more with it, I think, but he was at an age and a point in his life where I think it was a confidence thing. I was in a, a, a relationship would all would also ultimately go to be like three years too. So I had that angle too. I was living in an apartment with like my right. first really yeah. long term serious. Yeah. But adult I, I think you remember it was a confidence thing was. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. To, to get going. If you'd been yeah. just a little older, maybe I think it, it would have. And I graduated with like an 84 or something. But one of the reasons I lacked confidence is because I knew what a uh, limited market there was for that in this city. Yeah. And there was already, I could name at least five people in my class that were way better than I was, even with an 84. There were guys who I'm like, well, he's going to fucking get the job before I mm -hmm. will, you know? And I kind of, and I've talked about this on here before too, but. I also realized I kind of liked being on the other side of the glass and performing more. And it was almost like torture to like watch that person just jamming out. And I'm like fucking working the board. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I appreciated it, but it, it wasn't for me. I don't think in the long run. Fair. Well, I know I th but what you just described is a lot of the music business too. It's like constantly comparing yourself to other people who yeah, are yeah. doing it. And it, even people in Ottawa are who, who are local that I know who are applying for the same festivals the same things and you're like oh shit they're you're gonna, like good they're luck gonna, they're gonna get not it. really no, but they're also exactly <laughs> but you're like they're better than me like they're gonna get it or whatever and sometimes you know you back into certain things and, and and things work out a certain way but yeah it's tough if you focus on that aspect like the competitive aspect which is really that's all the arts in really a it's lot not of the arts just it music sucks yeah um, comedy's you, the same way you get really down on yourself yeah. yeah, it's better to just try and find people that where you can support each other and yeah. just spread that positivity. Yeah, and just do it. I think doing it your own way is the key to anything in life. Like as soon as you start trying to follow a pattern or like some trying to replicate, yeah, of yeah. how to do it um, in the arts or in music, you fail yeah. because it doesn't matter if you're successful 
doing it that way, like ultimately people will know it's not genuine. You know, it's not who you are. It's and, weird though, because it's the same thing in comedy. It's like, you'll hear people talking about finding your voice, yeah. but a lot of the time sort of mimicking someone else's style or being inspired by whatever you want to call it is the only way to first get yourself up on that stage. Cause that's yep. how you are able to go, okay, yeah, I can do this cover pretty good or, you know, yeah, that's true. Sort of like, you know, try to let that bleed into your creative process. But like you said, you have to eventually start to hone your own angle. Yeah. Well, I think that um, even the comics that I like, cause I'm a huge comedy fan. Like I'm, I've never done stand up. I've never even, I was going to ask you it. that actually. <laughs> I did. I actually, there was some night that I had to judge for, I can't even remember what it was for. It was for, for um, like a like comedy an, competition. It was like an LGBT, LGBTQ plus event in Ottawa right before. To be fair, there's COVID. probably a you in there now. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and like a two spirit as well in there. Yeah. Like, so, but um, it was at Happy Goat Coffee. Okay. And okay, there I've were different people performing and doing bits. And then like each of the judges at the end of the night, this, this girl, uh, Veronica, who, who's well known in Ottawa, I, I, she got me on the panel and I was like, sure. Yeah. I'll judge comedy for sure. And then at the end she was like, oh, by the way, every person on the panel has to do a little, like a, a minute or, oh, no or whatever. And I was like, she oh, told you that God. the night of, yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> so I fudged my way through something and like kind of half, I'm sure I half ripped something off, but you know, it's not really fair if you found out last no. minute. That's some bullshit right there. But, uh, but uh, it was, you know, it was okay. Like I, I got through it, but it's something. So I don't know if you talked about this with other musicians, but because sometimes people will say, oh, like music and comedy, they have such similar vibes. And I'm like, mm, it's true. But in comedy, the scary thing to me is like every person in the world has body issues. Like I don't care how your body looks, but you're sure, literally yeah. standing up on stage with just you and a microphone and like you, your job is to make people laugh. Yeah. When you're playing music, you're usually hiding behind a guitar or like you have a band or some other people with you. And if you get a laugh from saying a dumb joke, it's like a bonus. Like you're not expected to make people laugh. You're just expected to play songs. Yeah, Most entertain. of the time you won't get booed Yeah. or heckled. So comedy is a very different vibe i think it takes a little bit of a i mean you're you're thicker skin. asking the wrong guy because most i'd say the majority of the time that i perform i'm doing musical comedy oh, so well, i'm kind of go. like blending the oh, two that's cool well okay. because my roots were in music growing up as a teen and then i only i think i tried stand up the first time when i was like 20 28 something somewhere around there 2015 whatever that would be oh yeah it was closer to 30 then actually okay I, yeah it was must have been 29 so and you do the Bob Saget type thing, like you play songs and talk to people and stuff like that? No, I would just straight up write like comedy songs, like oh, okay. um, like Flight of the Concords or, you know. Like parody type stuff? No, 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 not even Weird Al style. Just okay. like write original comedy oh, music. I love would that. pick like a theme or a subject or whatever. And That's great. You know, they might have been about, um, like I wrote a song about furries, you know, like oh, just yeah. weird <laughs> shit like that. Um, but that being said, I'm, I'm trying to like, I'm doing a set on Wednesday, just a you know, open mic type yeah. amateur night, whatever. It's like cool. yuck yucks, but um, I don't think I'm going to bring the guitar and I'm going to force myself to just kind of like try out a bunch of new shit. Even nice. if I got a piece of paper on stage, I don't even care. It just it's worth it to see what lands and, and really just challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone a bit, you know? That's great, man. Well, well, we'll see how I feel on Wednesday night after it's done. How long? So how long have you been doing comedy? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, people ask me that and I find... I'm very hesitant to say because I'm such a like intermittent comedian. Yeah. But uh, if it's intermittent, it doesn't matter. It's still time. Like, even uh, yeah. If... So first time was April fools in 2015. So oh, okay. cool comedy anniversary. I will say off the so bat. Seven, fools. Yeah. April fools. Almost eight years. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I just, when I comparatively to so many comics that I know and that I've interviewed who fucking grind and they're like doing, yeah. you know, seven sets a week or whatever it is. And then here I am, like, I'll come out of the the woods, you know, every couple months and do maybe a few sets. Yeah, I mean, I, I do well. I've, yeah. I've, 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 I don't think I've ever really fucking bombed. And no. I've had some mediocre sets. But generally, I, I take that time in between to really prepare yeah, yeah. and try to, like, be like, okay, yeah, I don't do this often. But when I do do it, I'm not going to suck. You no. Know? And I don't think, I mean, well, I, I, you watch Kill Tony, like I do, too. Yes, yeah. Which is a big uh, comedy mecca. But, it, it, yeah, like he'll ask people too, like how long they've been doing it. And it doesn't really ask like how I consistently. Think, yeah. It doesn't say what frequency it. really. Yeah, like yeah. Sometimes he'll ask, but it's sort no, of it's like my own insecurity for sure. Yeah. And I think that's cool. Cause as you and I have seen too, there are people who have been doing it for 15 years who get up and suck 
Or they're still yeah. doing they're the just same really set. The same set, or they're just not good, and it, it it goes bad. And then there's someone who's been doing it for three weeks, and they just crush. Yeah, right. So it's so funny how that. I was gonna do a shout works. out later in the episode because I didn't want to like switch gears, but since you brought up Kill Tony, we got to give a shout out to Aaron Belial. Yeah, Aaron. On, only two episodes he came on here. Big fan, man. And uh, hilarious. Aaron, you know, when we recorded this podcast, he was just about to head to Austin and he told me he couldn't talk about it on the podcast, but he said, I'm going to try and get on Kill Tony. Wow. No so, way. Yeah. Just to, and I've been kind of messaging with him the last few weeks as all this has been unfolding. Like, you got this, buddy. And he's just fucking killing it. And now it they really just talked is. about him on Rogan, wow. which, you know, regardless of how you might feel about Joe Rogan, uh, he's still one of the biggest influential oh, yeah. podcasters in the world. Oh, and to have a guy like Aaron who's been doing comedy for six to nine months or something. Yeah. Now he's getting talked about on this huge podcast. He's fucking destroying on Kill Tony. Yeah. Four weeks in a row, I think he's been on now. Yeah, he's he is I think he's become a regular on the show. He got the golden ticket the apparently. Golden ticket. Yeah. Which, which they've amazing. only given out like ten times. No, I I mean I've seen so many sets on there, and when he came up, um it was like a destroy factor that was off the scale that I've never he got really standing seen. ovation. Yeah, unreal. On his first time. And like all of the panel were just dying they're floored yeah yeah it was unreal like he's just obviously it's such a funny mind but he he also seems like just an incredibly positive human being he really is smiling and like just very friendly and like makes fun of himself makes fun of everybody like it's it's just yeah well that was a big thing we talked about when he came on here big fan how uh he's overcome a lot of negativity and toxicity and and a lot of mindscapes that he was a part of before that he really put a lot of hard work into escaping those the clutches of that you know so shout out to aaron keep doing what you're doing you're fucking killing it uh and i'll also give a shout out to kenny and spenny because uh we were trying to line up an interview with the both of them didn't happen there was a snowstorm that day but i still got to go see their show thank you also to brandon for comping me a ticket uh, so yeah, Very go cool. see the 20th anniversary tour for Kenny and Spenny if you're a fan, because it was, it was highly entertaining if you're I, a Kenny versus Spenny fan. Yeah, man, I'm a huge fan of Kenny versus Spenny. I watched that show over and over again. When I think it was originally on Showcase. Uh, it was originally on CBC for CBC, one season, and right. then it was too much for them, so yeah, they went over there. Yeah, the Showcase, but Showcase was like the place for like the more raw uncut trailer Canadian. park boys trailer park boys yeah red was, shoe diaries if we yeah, want to yeah that's erotic. right you're, you're, you're at night you're like oh watch what's on everyone forgets red shoe diaries uh, Fucking remember. david duchovny it was his pre-californication show that he did for years where he would like read this it's a great sex show. journal no people would write him like letters about erotic experiences yeah. they would have and then he would sort of narrate it as you would then i think watch yeah a recreation of whatever the letter was about oh, totally. but when you're like a teenager it was up there with blue nui it was like yeah. i'm gonna see some titties i know it's funny <laughs> you, you know. mentioned blue nui because that was take us the one yeah that i would watch uh take us that was the station right uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, on channel 11 yeah channel 11 and i would tape that shit to vhs oh, of course well when <laughs> I, I i'll i'll go you one further because when i grew up christian and you grew up very sexually repressed but uh we would watch it at my friend, and I hope I'm not shaming him in any way. My you friend, don't have to say my friend Chris Wing's house. <laughs> okay, and it was scrambled, so he, he couldn't quite get the channel. Like it was like that those blue lines that yeah, would go yeah. through, and it just wasn't coming through. I think maybe also because he didn't have cable or something too. So in this but, weird like rainbow, yeah, that's right. You'd and see we would nipple. watch it. We would watch it through <laughs> that. And that's how that's how desperate we were at that. Age. And it was probably still titillating. No, it was, like, yeah, you were like, oh man. See, Something's I've always happening. found that weird. Yeah. And, and yeah, I've been in that situation, I'm sure, when I was a teenager. But guys watching porn together, never yeah, understood I, it. I was, it's no, like, what's it the only, end game here? It only happened a, <laughs> a couple times. And uh, yeah, I later went to Laurentian University. I can't believe I'll tell the story, but whatever. Uh, I was at Laurentian in the com- common room where everybody's watching TV. All guys dorm. The, the residence is called University College. And there was... Like I, I walked in and I think it was my second or third day there and there was like 10 guys all in the room, just all watching porn together. Like hardcore porn? Dude. Hardcore. <laughs> with a, so weird. With a giant penis on the screen. It was just like, what? Like, What's bro, check out that vein. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> what are you doing? No, honestly, I'm not even kidding you. One guy said, and I quote, that guy has a rocket. 
And that's what, yeah, it was just maybe funny. Like I was discovering and something maybe about maybe himself. They're maybe they're all finding some stuff out. But or maybe yeah, when you really left, there was just a massive circle jerk. That's yeah, I mean, there, might, there might have been. I mean, weirder things happen at that school. Oh, God. Well, yeah, Sudbury, Ontario. What a turn that took. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> Take who has. Yeah, we had to go down that, <laughs> that path. We had to kind of see where it would lead. Um, so. Before I forget, though, Raven Street Studios, going back to that, can we just acknowledge that they're actually on Raven Avenue? What the fuck? That's pretty wild. <laughs> it's I know. like after this many years of being in operation, you think they would either change to Raven Avenue Studios or they would like reach out to the city yeah. and be like, hey, any, does anyone actually care if we change this to Raven Street? I know. This would really help our brand. It would. And, and people will say to me sometimes, they're like, so they're like, Graven, you're, do you record at Raven Street sometimes? Like it's so, the name is so close. I'm like, well, no, not really. And they're like, there's studios on Raven Street and your thing is called Graven Town. Like when I would make my things. And I was <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, you're clutching at straws, but I get the the rhyme of it. But like yeah. Graven Town, that's what like your fans have yeah, dubbed themselves. That's right. right? Yeah. And uh, they are collectively Graven Town. The collective, I started calling. I uh, started calling the live streams that I was doing during lockdowns Graventown. Okay. So people would come on and I was a big fan of um, Dan Harmon for a long time. Oh, I yeah. Think, you know? Community. And he had a thing called Harmontown. Yeah, yeah. So years back and it was a, a podcast or whatever. And I, I just loved his like journey of how he was like very open and honest with uh, things he was learning about himself and sort of using it almost like therapy, like a psychological mm -hmm. kind of way and the way he would do comedy and his podcasting and Hmm. trying to learn more things about himself too. And so I, I love that. And I was like, yeah, and Graven, Graventown too. Like, you know, I'm a big fan of Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Like I love the documentary. You like the community feel I love the it. community. Okay. Yeah. And I just love people feeling welcome and feeling like they can be themselves. Like it's really. So I guess they're really me. like, they're like Gravenites. Or Gravenites, maybe. The Gravenese. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Gravenese. That sounds like a language though. Yeah, yeah, I that's speak, true. Do you speak Gravenese? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. Shifting back to your music, I want to, I tried off the top, but how would you describe your sound? I mean, I, I said alt folk, folk rock. That's maybe the easiest descriptor, but do you have yeah. maybe a more broken down how you would? Uh, I say, yeah, I say folk rock. I say, um, I try and do comparisons sometimes because, you know, when, when you say like alt country, like I, I say that too, but then some people are like, well, what does that mean? And I'll say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Wilco. Do you listen to them? Maybe some similarities and people. I don't get country no. vibes from you though. No, sometimes. Well, I play with like a pedal steel player. Oh yeah, that's that. true. Yeah, I did hear some of that. And then, um, but also. But your lyrics aren't like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, you know, like. No. Yeah, no, my my lyrics are very uh, just, I I don't know. It sounds lame, but I try and keep them truthful. Like it's more about my, my experiences and what I've gone through and. Uh, that's something that really comes through. Actually, what I wrote down, uh, where did I put it here? Was that there were, oh yeah, it's full of wholesomeness, your music, is, is the first thing I would oh. say. Love and, and positivity, really. I mean, oh, you have thanks, some man. songs about mourning and stuff, but generally it's very uplifting, yeah. kind of chill out vibe, sure. you know? Yeah, thanks. I do try to hit that mark because um, I just feel like there's a lot, there's, hey, we all know. This world is an extremely sad place. You don't have to go very far to realize that. If you're sure can human, be. Here, if you're a human being and you wake up in the morning and you think and you feel and you're empathetic, there's yeah. tons of sadness. There's and despair to be found. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you go. So I don't know. I just always try and a couple of years ago, maybe around 2018 or so, I, I tried to shift my view and I, I was a young dad as well of my, my daughter who was just, had just come into the world. And, um, I was sort of always thinking like in terms of, oh, I, I haven't got this. And I would see other musicians who I was hanging around with who are very kind of cynical people too. And, and artists especially can be very cynical, you yeah. know, it's sort of like, ah, oh, I didn't get this. This didn't work out. Like fuck the world. Yeah. The whatever. universe hates me. Yeah. And, uh, and that's real and people can feel that and that's fair. It's valid. But I just started shifting to gratitude and and just trying to think of like okay well if you take as a human being you get up in the morning the first thing you generally feel is some kind of sorrow or like ah oh, i don't really like my job i don't like this thing i wish i had more money you know these things come into your mind but if you just take like one little step further you can be like oh you know i'm alive I have a I roof, have over, a roof my over my head. head. Yeah, yeah. I have like some food. Foodie, yeah. I have family, friends, friends, like that kind of thing. And just 
taking stock and, and of course, like having a daughter has helped me feel that a lot too. And just being very grateful. And so, yeah, I, I do try to live my life in that way. And, and kindness is a big thing too. Like watching the Mr. Rogers documentary a couple of years ago, that totally completely changed my life. Like it was a, a bizarre moment where I had like a, an afternoon off in the summer and it was, I think it was August or so. And, um, around the same time, 2018, my ex was away with my daughter and I was just in town in Ottawa and I was like, huh, what am I going to do? And I was wanting to see the Mr. Rogers documentary and I saw, oh, it's playing at the Mayfair. We're dropping all this Ottawa local knowledge here. People are like, what, what are they talking about? But, uh, the Mayfair, you've been to the Mayfair? Yeah. Yeah. Cool th- yeah, it's classic. yeah. I performed there a couple oh, times. Oh yeah. Oh cool. Yeah. So it was like 20 people in the theater summer afternoon and You know, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be kind of an expose probably about this guy and some bad stuff he did with kids or whatever, you know, just thinking cynically. And really, he really was this like light of a human being who was just really kind to people. And he just wanted to be with kids and make them feel heard in a way that they hadn't before. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was so beautiful in his whole life. He was really sick himself as a kid. And had to spend so much time in bed. And so then any time that he had beyond that, he was really thankful for. And you felt yeah, like he was living on borrowed yeah, time kind of. Yeah. And I think he just really he was just a very like kind person. And after like partway through the movie, I was just sort of like had this revelation. I was like, oh yeah, kindness is really like it's a thing you the can do. The <laughs> only real thing. Yeah. As a human being, we all know how to do it and it doesn't cost anything. And it's kind of a shortcut. It's not that hard to do, but it's like one of the only shortcuts in life that actually works. Yeah, you know. And um, and there's nothing. Asked. And so often you don't neglected ask too. Back. So often neglected too. And so the credits went up, and it cut to like really quiet music or something. And I was sitting there, and like the twenty people in the theater, all of them, all you could hear was audible sobs, like people <laughs> just, just sobbing. And I was one of them. And the tears were just like coming down because I was like fuck this way I've been thinking about life in terms of like what I haven't got, what I need to get, you know, how these things haven't worked out. It's like, just be kind to people. You can affect you work that. hard and you be kind to people and good things are going to happen. Yeah. And Even so, a freaking smile goes so yeah, long. Totally. Man. Like the, in the way that the kind of interactions you can have, I just went yeah. and picked up a shawarma for Kelly. Nice. And I've noticed in the past, sometimes that the place I go to that they're not outwardly really friendly, but then, you know, sure enough, I kind of, made a joke or something and smiled. And then all of a sudden the guy lit up and for the rest of the transaction, totally. he was a different human being, you know? It's so, yeah. And that, I was just talking about shawarma with Sloan earlier today about how she needs to- uh, Sloan's your daughter. Yeah, yeah, Sloan is my daughter. Sorry, yeah. So, and I was saying, I really miss shawarma. I haven't done that for a while. So I need to, I just started just like, my mouth started watering thinking of the garlic <laughs> of the shawarma that you got. Oh, that shit yeah, on the potatoes. On oh, oh, man. And and in Ottawa, we're spoiled. There's so many good shawarma places. A great Lebanese community here. For yeah, sure. you would think that would bring like the quality down that there were so many, but really no. they're all pretty good. They really are. <laughs> At least the ones I've been to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, um, I want to ask you on the musical path. Like, I, I read that you started probably around 2000 in Halifax. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And and so were you like supported by your family in this decision? Was it more of just a hobby at that point? Or was it something pretty much from the get-go you're like, this is going to be my thing? Um, no, yeah, that was it was really a hobby at that point. I was working other jobs and I was like on the way to um, being married at that point. I think okay. well, I was, ju- no, I, th- I think I started um, dating my wife around 2001 or, or two or something. Anyways, um, anyways, yeah, I went to Halifax to record my very first, um, my very first record, it was like something ridiculous about it. It's like fourteen songs in two days with this guy wow. Charles Austin, and I never met him. I just saw him on a Much Music video, um, a Much Music special about his new studio he was opening because he was in a band called the Super Friends for a long time, and still is like when they play. Yeah, with the Z, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and Super Friends, Sloan. Um, uh, local rabbits, like they were all part of this label called Murder Records. In so Halifax. you didn't live in the East Coast? No. Nope. Okay. But I had some friends. My my friend Mark went to university out there, and he got married out there, and I was out there for a while, a couple times, and I just I really fell in love with the East Coast. And but I was in Ottawa, just working, and I, you know, just happened to see that 
on much music. This is early internet days, right? Like 2000. And, and I was like, oh, Charles Austin, he's talking about his studio. I was like, I, I'm, I've listened to some super friends stuff. I like it. It kind of follows like where I would want to go musically. I was like, I should try and find his email or something. I wonder if I could email him. And, and I did. And, uh, and he wrote back and was just like, yeah, oh, that's cool. I, I like what you're you know, trying to do. And I was asking him about home recording techniques. He was really nice. He was like, yeah, I would put, maybe put a microphone here, like way back from the drums and try the, doing that with whatever. And, um, had you been performing at all at this point? No, no. Oh, you were I mean, totally just writing was, in your room. I was writing, but I, pl I played in other bands. So I played in a few other bands and performed mostly in like Christian circles. Like there was a band called, um, oh, so you were really Christian. Crushing oh yeah. Okay. okay. I went to Catholic school till I was in grade oh, eight, but I okay. never identified as a, as a, Christian. Oh, funny! You I was never baptized. I was like the black sheep. You weren't a card carrying Catholic. As they no, say. I didn't even get to eat the little fucking bread. I was <laughs> the only kid who didn't. So I always felt kind of ostracized about that. But, but Hey, well, it could have gone. I didn't get worse. raped by a priest. I, 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 I was so. going to say that. Thanks for saying that. And I didn't have to. I appreciate <laughs> that. You're the comedian. So I didn't. Are you still, um, sorry to shift no. lanes here, but no, no, I'm not. I, I mean, I'm, I would say I'm a, I'm a Satanist now. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm into death metal. No, I am, uh, I'm spiritual. I would say like, I do believe maybe that there's something out there, um, like maybe some kind of, yeah, like universal intelligence or something. I know that sounds vague, but I just don't like, you're not an atheist though. You're not, not like a flat. No, out. no, no. Death is I think the there, there's something, uh, yeah. but I don't know what it is. And I, I, I sort of like the mystery of that. And I like that I'm at, I'm at an age now, like I have a daughter. I don't really want to fight wars with people like if someone goes to church now like even the same stuff that i grew up in like baptist presbyterian pentecostal whatever and the, and it, br it brings them joy and it gives them meaning hey man all power to you but as soon as these, they start like ramming it down my throat then yeah. that's not no, i'm not into it no matter what religion it is like jehovah's witness or whatever it's like it doesn't like need to be an external I've thing it can just be an internal thing handwritten letters from an unknown address from Jehovah's Witnesses. Wow. Like long, because I talked to them a couple times at my door and they okay. probably wrote down my address. But yeah, a couple times I've gotten these letters where I'm like, who the fuck is this from? And it's just this like long handwritten <laughs> thing about how I should embrace the Lord. Of or... course. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they are interesting, man. I, I spent some time with, when I was hardcore Christian, with some Jehovah's Witnesses because they were like a target group where for Christians who wanted to kind of convert or to figure out more about their church and like what they did and stuff. So anyways, it's, it's funny. Um, I guess I should say more because I say Christian, it was more like evangelical Christians, right? So the type I hung out with the type of people where they wanted to convert everybody. Oh, they're like aggressive so, about yeah. their faith. Okay. Yeah. And well, like, much like Jehovah's Witnesses, kind exactly. of are, yeah, but not door to door random. Like it was more like, well, actually, no, that's not true. <laughs> there was some random stuff, like. Um, but they see it as like they're helping someone. They're bringing them into the light right. of the Lord, and they're doing a favor to you. That's what we thought too. Yeah, uh, it's as, like Mormons are like that. Yeah, I was part of um, a group at at Guelph for a long time, a couple of years. Like I was part of this intervarsity Christian fellowship, and they were more chill, just kind of like you know, um, relaxed and would have worship songs and like kind of get together, have community sort of stuff. But the campus crusade for Christ, right. Which sounds very aggressive. Wow. Yeah. Was a very, you know, um, evangelical group that wanted to convert people. And, um, yeah. Do you still have a lot of family that the, gravitates the, that way? The, no, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So you go to family reunions. Really there. No, like there's some, I have family in the, in the States. I have family all over my, the religious spectrum is all over, but Hey, as I see it now, I don't want to throw shade at anybody who um, believes something that gives them hope, that gives them joy. Like, that's great. If it works for you, that's good. Just try your best as long as not, you're not to ram it people, down someone else's throat. You know? or, or, you know, being like outwardly causing problems. That's right. And, you know, because to me, I feel like even if it's super unlikely or I'm like, yeah, that's that's definitely yeah. not the right religion or whatever. No one really knows. We could all be fucking wrong. Any that's one right. of us. And we are it's all going to find out when we die one day. And you might be like, guess what? It was like... <laughs> Insert religion here. You know, they they had it right. They Buddhists, won. Buddhists had it right the whole time. Yeah, that's probably where I lean. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's... We're going to just come back as something else and the force. We're going to be rejuvenated as some new form of energy. That's Honestly, that's kind of where yeah. my mind goes. That like, No, it's true. You, you just blend back into some sort of cosmic mixture of 
energy and like time that. space and then we, you know you get reinserted somewhere else and you live that experience and then cosmic mixture that could be that's a good band name right <laughs> yeah, there. Not bad. yeah sounds like a drink name too yeah it does. a cosmic mixture <laughs> <laughs> we all are we're all cosmic mixtures right yeah we're just Stardust. us sitting here literally yeah it's um no, sorry, very weird. much derailed uh, no, you no, telling no, no. me about good. the I love this. of your... Um... By the way, I love going down rabbit holes because it's so fun. And, I just uh, want to put a pin in it, though, because I don't want to yeah. um, forget no. your, your origin story about music. I don't want to be the guy who asks no. that and then never That's gets good. the answer. So to, long story short, I mean, I have a lot of people who are in my life still who are very Christian, who are evangelical, who are like agnostic, atheist, like all, all over the map. So I'm... You know, I'm just like, w do what works for you. Live and but, let live. But that, uh, yeah, until it gets to a point where you're, that's right, as you said, hurting other people or... Fingering just, altar boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for saying Very that specific. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but they deserve it no, to just no, the do. degree that it's been done. It's they not do. like one or two random bad priests. Like when you look at the numbers, it's fucking mind blowing. It's insane. And it all gets swept under the rug and they get moved to another parish and, you know, the Pope's in his fucking golden... Yeah. You know, Vatican telling you how you should save the world while he's actively oh, like surrounded by riches. I don't know. I have my qualms with yeah, I the do Catholic too. Church specifically. There was there was a great I don't sorry. I, I, I know it's okay. I won't do a, ju a justice, but there was a great Super Dave bit where he talked about the Catholic Church and it was sort of like it's like what what was with all the crap about that? Like there was like a vote, uh, the Vatican. That was a good Super Dave. Uh, the later I years. Can do yeah. it sometimes yeah, the later years. Uh, there was one he did a podcast with norm mcdonald which is like my favorite like sometimes i still watch it just it, it, it just relaxes me it brings me joy like i love it and uh there's some really irreverent parts i think those were times where norm was just like they were just like oh let's get norm on a podcast and see what happens and he was just like derailed going all you know and saying yeah. jokes that were just like whoa Be norm yeah yeah so but yeah super dave said something about to that effect and it was like I was with all the crap at the Vatican and then it was like and then they took a vote and they were like all people um it's like anyone who wants to become a high priest uh it was something like have you ever have you ever <laughs> yeah it was something rude like that it's like have you ever finger banged a boy unanimous yeah something like <laughs> they're that. all in yeah, it yeah yeah well, so I hope that, like, if you share this episode and some of your extended family sees it, that I'm not this blasphemer no. for saying those things. But, I already you know. am that guy, so you're fine, man. They're okay, gonna, yeah, it's true. You just you. said something I'm the black sheep. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, I, I don't want to throw everything away because I think all religions, uh, you know, they all bring something to the table that's worth keeping and mm -hmm. sinking your teeth into. That's right. But I think that when you get so narrow-minded with any one of them that you close off a lot of other, you know. Yes, options yeah, right. and, and things you should maybe be exploring as well that's true I by the way i should backtrack too is i don't know if is black sheep not a good term to use anymore or is that still oh because the connotation is oh, yeah. the black sheep is the bad one right i th i figure you could say blue sheep to me it was just because he's different the odd... from the group yeah he's yeah, the yeah. one that stands up but you're right let's start saying blue sheep <laughs> for the rest of the I just i'll go in and thought about it. that <laughs> but i mean that's a great also a great movie with chris farley i love that black movie. sheep black yeah, yeah. Sheep, yeah. Yeah, it was no. like a political movie. Where the, they're running a campaign or something. I haven't seen it. Either. Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. Black I Sheep. saw Tommy Boy a lot more than that. Oh, one. yeah. The Black Sheep had a great um, small role by Gary Busey, which okay. was very funny. And his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he like grabbed David Spade near this bus that he was living in out in the wilderness. And David Spade was sort of like walking around it. And he, he grabbed him and he was like... he. He grabbed him by his chest and David Spade's just like peeing the whole time because he's so scared. Well, I think he was peeing and then he grabbed him and he's just still urinating the whole time. And he's <laughs> like, no, you're on my property. He's like, I can, he's like, I can explode your cortex or splatter your heart. Which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> just like a classic. You know, a great Gary like, Busey fucking cameo is uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, he's like yeah. the state trooper that kind of hits on Johnny Depp and I then eventually tells him that. to go to a resting station. But he's kind of like, you know. You got you got soft features or something like that. It just goes really weird. I only saw that movie once because I found it incredibly disturbing, like hard to get through. We never got through it because we would always uh, being you know You'd be uh, super high. Yeah, right? we'd yeah. all be like, let's fucking yeah. do shrooms and watch Fear and Loathing and, yeah. or whatever it was. We'd always never make it more than two Fair. thirds of the way. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a high guy. Like I wish that I could I could be that person or whatever. But I I will you know smoke weed. The odd, odd time, but that's the like only, once a year yeah. kind of thing. And I'm not trying to be pious or whatever, but it's, um, 
it's the only thing that I've ever done in my life. Like I've oh, never, wow. never done any other type of. We got to throw alcohol training. into the mix. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I, only I, I because our society beer, so but. commonly makes it seem like alcohol is I not know. a drug, like all those drugs. You but know, no, but people, come on. So sometimes people hear my music or they see me or whatever. And I wear like tie dye and stuff too. And they just assume they're like, oh man, you must do, you must do shrooms or something. Right. Or whatever. And I'm like, you're like, I don't, you like, um, I'm scared the of the grateful dead. Don't you? Yeah. I think you're I'm like, like the reverse grateful dead. I'm like the ungrateful dead, but the like grateful uh, alive, but the ungrateful <laughs> alive. But no, it's like, um, someone told me, they're like, oh, you, especially with your lyrics and writing and being artistic, like you should do shrooms. And I was like, okay, well, how long does it take? And they're like, oh, sometimes eight to 10 hours. I'm like, that oh, sounds like a long. nightmare. No, that's like acid. Okay. Uh, shrooms is like four to six. Well, still, that's still a nightmare. It's still a nightmare. If it's like, I get Unless it's not. In Unless, yeah. So, but yeah. you know, what's so weird though, the way the shrooms works is you are a thousand more times likely to get into some sort of a bad trip scenario if you have preemptively convinced yourself that that's what's going to happen. Oh, okay. It's Fair. very much like, Fair. I almost think it's like better if someone just like gave you shrooms and you didn't even know it. I'm not saying okay. any, I'm not recommending anyone dose their friends with shrooms. No. I'm just saying that like Ari Shafir over here. What's yeah. Going on? yeah no. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were just talking about that the other day, actually. Um, no, but I mean, if you're wait, what's in this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a couple of, uh, Ketamine pills. And oh, no. shit. I'm going down the K-hole. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, but if you were if you were to be unaware or not have to, like, if you're the type that you're going to fix fixate on that and really, like, obsess about that, you might actually have a bad trip because you're going to be like, yeah. oh, what's going to happen? Uh, how's this going to go? I, oh, no, I'm sure it's going to go bad, and you're yeah. just going to spin yourself out. But I still think the shrooms would find a way to overcome that and be like, no, you're fine. Maybe. It's situational, too. Don't surround yourself in a horrible setting. No. That will also be a really bad way to go. But I had a, no, and I had a friend who thought the same thing and they, uh, they tried shrooms for the first time. They, they will remain nameless, but uh, on this podcast, but they were at their birthday party and, um, not like shrooms those porno for the first guys. time. No. And <laughs> just ended up being on the floor of their kitchen. See, I'm not even saying the gender, so I don't give away who it is. Uh, on the floor of their kitchen, and different people were like walking around them, and they ended up urinating while Ooh. they're lying down on the floor and then like touching themselves over their pants like for mm. a couple hours. I don't know this person, but with my experiences with mushrooms, I'm going to say that lies more in the person that took the yeah, mushrooms but than probably, the mushrooms. Yeah, probably. That sounds like ecstasy but more dude, than shrooms. This is the thing is like I might seem like a – chill person but i actually have a lot of anxiety too so i don't like my brain being i don't like feeling like i'm that out of control you yeah know? with with beer which is like the only thing i really drink it's like i, I can it's always predictable you know yeah i know like the spot that i'm gonna get to alcohol has to work feel the it. same yeah well and even if you get to the point where you're like throwing up spinning out you've probably had that happen in your yeah. life drinking oh, yeah. before and you're like no oh, this sucks but i'm gonna get through it exactly so yeah, I don't know. With other stuff like shrooms, it's kind of like you just got to do it because then it'll become a thing like that. When and you're you'll just be like, in it. Yeah, you'll be like, oh. That's the feeling I don't want. I don't want to be in a spot where I'm like, oh, you're just in it now. Like, I hate that. That's Interesting. The, so I've been I've been really high off of weed before um, out in BC in Duncan, British Columbia. I um, drunk in Duncan, shout out. I um, was there on a um, first time touring across Canada with my friend JD from Winnipeg and, and the owner of this venue was like, Hey, and he was this really tall, cool dude. His name's John. People wouldn't know who he is. He's a nice guy, but he was like, Hey, do you guys want to have a hit of this? And I've been like smoking weed very occasionally, like in my life. And I was like, sure. And he goes, okay. And J JD's from Winnipeg. And he goes, which one of you guys is from Ontario? And I was like, I am. And he's like, all right. He's like, this is really strong. Just so you know, and I was like, Oh, sure, you know, just whatever, trying to be tough. Anyways, we had a, like a, only a few hits, like literally not very much. It was a big joint, like a blunt, basically. But, uh, but yeah. if you don't smoke, that's oh, gonna dude, it was like rock your world. eight hours. Like it was a long Whoa. time of just feeling. I thought I was gonna die. Shit. I was like calling people at your home. Your heart's beating so fast. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I was like looking in the mirror, feeling pale. And I was like, what the hell? Anyways, my friend Dan, who's back in Ottawa, was texting him like pre-smartphone, like, hey, what do you, you know, um, I heard about this study. Someone mentioned it, and I think I heard a name for the weed that he got. It's called Time Warp. And then like as I was coming down from it later on into the show that we were playing, ended up being actually a really nice night. 
when when it when it came down, it was like, oh, this is really nice. And my friend Trish told me that on the phone. She's like, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna get through it. You're just gonna kind of ride it out, and it's gonna be like you're gonna have a nice show. It's gonna be a nice time, and it was. And as I was coming out of it, uh, my friend Dan texted me, and he 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 like found the Google description of the stuff called Texada Time Warp. You can look it up, and it's like the literally the strongest strain of well, there you marijuana. Go. That so you it's can not find. necessarily the weed in <laughs> no, general. It's just but I just you didn't had, like that. Yeah. Feeling well, that's a that, but that's a terrible first experience. I used to give the analogy that like if you were like, hey, have you ever tried yeah. drinking? No. Here's a shot of tequila. I know. You know, <laughs> you'd be true. like, well, I don't like this. But if someone gave you a Smirnoff ice, you might be like, I think I could yeah. get into this. So it's kind of the same if you're just going to get some CBD high, really low THC joint. Yeah. Not to push it on anyone, but um, yeah. it's just interesting because when you bring up anxiety, I can only think of my own. And certainly weed has given me anxiety. But if we're talking about psychedelics, there is this weird thing where like as someone who really does have OCD and anxiety, I've mm. had experiences where Same. the next day, yeah. the next week after doing mushrooms or something like that, my whole worldview is just calmed down, but not in a druggy way at all, in like a clarity way. It's like, it just mm. like takes away all the noise and the clouds. And all of a sudden you're just like really taking in the beauty of the world and nature and friendships in a way that makes me feel almost like childlike. Like mm. you, feel, you cool. feel like you're in kindergarten or something, all your baggage is just kind of like I like that. Not not like you disregard your life, but all of a sudden yeah. it just feels more manageable and you're like, okay. And you yeah. realize how much of this you were putting on yourself and just yep. the way you were navigating your problems. And, um, yeah. you know, it Definitely. sounds very dreamy and whatever. I'm not saying it'll go that way for everyone, but there is. I would is, love to experience that. That sounds great. But you got to take I get know. the ticket to take I the don't. ride, right? You know? I'm going to, yeah. A stand. Sounds very like some 70s stand dry line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in an alley. Yeah, yeah. Take the digging. Yeah, we're going to go. The trip. We're going to go in the back room after this. And no, no. But no, yeah. Anyways, no. to each their own, of course. Yeah. I would never try to, um, you know, heavily influence someone into uh -huh. doing something they were uncomfortable with. But I can only speak from my own experiences. And when you're talking about anxiety, that's a vein that I feel like, okay, well, now I have to say something because yeah. I am you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it's went true. okay. And yeah, I was worried good. about that kind of shit and it went okay. And it was yeah. not at all what I expected it to be. I so. know. And I think it's, it's for me, it's like a real um, control thing at times. Like I don't like feeling like I've – yeah, sort of lost total control of my brain. Like I r rarely ever will get. That's drunk. a very like, relatable feeling. Yeah, I don't re like. I rarely ever get drunk. Like it's like super rare. Like and I can have a few beers. Like I don't really. I don't drink out hard alcohol. Really, it's not for me. Yeah, I've me done either. that before. I've done like shots and I've done like occasionally went through a scotch phase and all that stuff. And it just doesn't work with my DNA, like my, yep. who I am. And same with um, even wine. Like the drunkest I've ever been in my life has been from drinking wine. Probably. Wine makes me feel sleepy. Yeah. Like I got to take a nap not. and I can't, you're slurring your speech. Yeah, it's and, not. Yeah, I'm not a fan. It's not good. Red no. wine specifically. Yeah. There's something about the tannins in it is something like it does. And the sugar is like, I've had nights with wine because I used to live in Niagara and uh, we would go to wineries and stuff and, and, and check different things out. And then, you know, you'd have a few glasses and it's like 10 30 at night and you're just like asleep and then you wake up at two and you're like wide awake it's something with wine and i read about this too like stanley really? tucci was talking about it. it's like the way the sugars in the wine process it like wakes you up almost like a caffeine hit weird in the night yeah well they if do say all alcohol wine. fucks up your sleep yeah in oh, yeah. general like it you does. don't get that not, rem sleep no it's not good for you that way. Do you want another Cheers, beer? Cheers, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I like beer. Beer to me is the most Beer is the easiest to pace myself, mm -hmm. I find. Or White Claws. Any equivalent, like 5% kind of drink in a can. White Claw, yes. Uh, oh, well, that's a calorie thing, really. That's Are like you just... a 24-year-old uh, female from Calabogie? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I you shouldn't know, say actually, that. White Claws are great. That they, was, they really that are delicious. Um, White Claw, we're looking for a sponsor. <laughs> no, hey, um... Same with you. And Big Rig, by the way, Graven Town. Yeah, that's down the street. That's probably a lot Rig. more attainable yeah. than White Claw. I should focus local. Sometimes I'm, st I'm sponsored at times by Gri by Big Rig. There's a promo code you can use. Oh, really? Right sometimes, on. yeah. Cool. Yeah, you should, I'll, I'll, yeah, next time. Graven. Just use Graven at the checkout. It gives you like a little discount. Cool. I will do but that. But I don't, yeah, I don't get anything from it. I just like Big Rig. They're they're good people. So. <laughs> okay, well, shit. We, I should get back to these notes. I'm sure, sure. I've got more to go over here. Um, I did want to know some musical influences that really got you going. You know, it's kind of a basic question, but no, it is sure. something that I feel like I is... I love talking about that stuff. Yeah, um, it's very relevant as a performer, what got you here, you know? Yeah. Um, 
No, it's good to think about that stuff. I I just mean it's a question you've probably been asked in interviews before. You know what? People don't ask it a lot. It's sort of like because I had a different relationship with music. I grew up like the. I was just thinking about this the other day. The first record I ever got was um, Bruce Springsteen, "Born in the USA," and so and my mom's American, and I have a lot of American relatives and on both sides of my family, oddly, and so it's kind of a special album that way. And and I yeah, I was. There were just so many hits, like every song on there I could sing along to, get into it. And then I kind of veered away from rock and roll or, or that vein. I got really into hip hop. So I was like a hardcore hip hop guy because I love the wordplay. I love the lyrics. Like the first four rap tapes I had were... Um, I was going to say, I read you made yeah. songs in your bedroom and stuff. Oh, yeah. And a MC first, Man of Steel. MC Man of Steel, that's right. <laughs> that was my my rapper name. Good, man, you do your research. So I, uh, the four, first four rap tapes I had were Run DMC, Raising Hell, um, uh, Beastie Boys, Licensed to Ill, LL Cool J, Bigger and Deffer, and nice. the Fat Boys, Crushing. That one and I don't know. The Fat Boys were this kind of... Sp- yeah, blip on the radar and rap. Like they had a couple albums and just the whole gimmick was that they were just fat guys. Like that was that was it. <laughs> okay. And they like could fat rap Albert. really well. Exactly. Yeah. Fat boys were like oh man, Marky D, Buffy, and then there's three of them. I can't think of the other guy. Anyways, they even had they had a movie at one point. I think it was called really? Del- Delirium. No, uh, I remember House Party. That's the one I think. Orderlies. Of. Yeah, Kid and Play. Kid and Play, Kid yeah, play. yeah. Yeah, the I was with the big I, fucking hair. I love that era because it was sort of like playful it was, it was something sort of fun about it. and if they were like you know uh dissing other rappers who they didn't like or who they were sort of maybe friends with or just sort of playing around they would put them down but with their words you know they had mm. to be creative to do it instead of i think where it evolved to at different points not saying it's that way now where it's just no but the east coast west coast yeah, yeah, yeah and cars and that's money what and i remember stuff. junior yeah, high was like course, biggie was and tupac era. and totally. then they both died within like six months or whatever of each other and they were like the kings right and and it's funny because tupac came from digital underground who i was a fan oh yeah of yeah the guy with the fake nose humpty and all hump, that. yeah, yeah humpty it's hump. such a weird story it really is. I've watched some stuff on that. I got really into the East Coast, West Coast documentaries like in my 20s. Right. But when that shit was actually going on in junior high, I fucking hated rap. I didn't give a mm-hmm. shit about it. All the people that I knew that liked that stuff were like wearing Tommy Hilfiger and going oh, yeah. to the dance and like all this other shit I didn't care about. I and I was like listening to the Beatles White Album and I just felt like an outcast <laughs> in middle school. Great album. Yeah. yeah. It's my, probably my favorite Beatles album. Yeah. It's got to be. It's a, now it's, we're, we really are all over the place. No, but it's awesome. I, I love the, so I, I got into music through hip hop, uh, really, like that was like 11, 12, somewhere around there. And it was just like, whoa. And I think one of the biggest records that, uh, out, rap albums that influenced me was Beastie Boys, um, Paul's Boutique. Okay. It was just like this all over the place album where- A lot of sampling. A lot of sampling. And then it even had like some songs with like subtracks on them. So there was like one song that I think had about- 10 or 20 subparts to it and the the gatefold of the album like and i got it on cassette it's just so weird like it had all the you know these different artwork and these different pictures and you know these shots of new york city on the outside of it and stuff and it was like yeah, the cover really is that building on the, the building, corner yeah, right the corner building yeah, yeah yeah and uh queens or whatever that is but anyways it was so cool and i I'd, I'd never heard any record like that before and and Plus, just, let's be honest, if it's that time in the musical landscape and you're into rap and yeah. these are white guys and you're like, no, they, yeah, they were cool. pre-Eminem. It was yeah. like, I guess it's okay if I'm doing this too, you know? No, it's true. And so I made some bedroom albums that never went anywhere. And I was sort of like, all right, I'm going to see where this where this goes. But I never, ever released them. I never did anything with them. I never put them online. Nothing Sounds like someone to put on the Patreon. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> I know at some point. Exclusive level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, yeah man of steel tier gold tier <laughs> yeah but i i feel like um I, yeah rap really made me appreciate words in a different way and and just also the beats and the sampling and all that stuff too you know it was so interesting to me and uh it was like you know those moments in your life where you look back maybe like a, a comedian that you saw who really like changed your life it's sort of like a light switch goes on inside yeah. of you and and rap and hip-hop were definitely one of those moments for me and then yeah, getting later, 
into music and people who influence me. Yeah, because um, that's hip hop. Like, is I know, like it's, people can have eclectic taste, but it's such a wide jump from the kind of music you play yeah, now. You know, it's true. But do anyway, you ever I, do you ever like rap just for the shits and giggles? No, <laughs> not really. It's like sometimes in the car if I hear something that I like. Like, so you still listen to some hip hop? Like, o- like older stuff. Yeah, like okay. it, um, someone sent me a video and it had it was like a cartoon Transformers thing, but it was like they were they were rapping to like they had dubbed in. That song by EPMD called So What You Saying, which is like older hip hop okay, song. I don't know yeah. That. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then it made me like want to, I had to go back and listen to that song and listen to my car. So you still got that in it. your blood a bit. Yeah, for sure. It's so like the smooth flow of like a really good rapper and rhymer. Like that's something that's just it's like beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. And like if they have really good beats and samples as well, like it's, you know, on a nice summer day. Like I never really got into, you know, super insane, intense rap, but I, I like stuff that was, you know, had a vibe to it. Like, like Tribe Called Quest. That's what I was going to say. That's totally probably the main hip hop I listened time. to. Oh, I was a Jurassic huge Five fan. is really good too. Jurassic Five were great. I got into them a little bit later when I was kind of leaving hip hop, but I, I still. I met great. this guy who was a drummer and he was like dating this girl that I was friends with and he showed me a lot of stuff like that. Like, he showed me um, Dilated Peoples. Oh, I never even heard and of that. And then there's another group called Jedi Mind Tricks. Oh, okay. And it was all the same kind of real true hip hop flow. It was really good stuff. Well, that's I mean, I haven't listened to it since he showed it to me, but I remember always feeling it. Dilated Peoples. It's so interesting. It's a good name too, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> funny. I saw something recently where, yeah, there was a video, it was some documentary I was watching and they were like, and, and, and they were like, here's a video by Trob called Quest, but it wasn't them. It was like the... Um, Leaders of the New School, which had them in it, I think. And that oh, al- that weird. also had, um, uh, oh, man, I was just trying to think of his name the other day. Anyways, I'm, I'm blanking. Like huge, big guy. Oh, Buster Rhymes. Buster Rhymes, yeah, yeah. He was in that too in those days because I think he was in Leaders of the New School. And I think Strive Called Quest would like sub in and MC in their songs. But I was like, my old rap self was like, this isn't even a Tribe Called Quest song, man. <laughs> You're purist. Yeah. I was like, you guys are fucking it up. No, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. And then musically for me, a big moment for me was Smashing Pumpkins for sure. Like I'd never really heard anything like that. Um, I loved a lot of rock and a lot of heavier stuff, but just how... Billy- Pumpkins is like artsy too. It was very artsy and Billy Corgan could sort of be like quiet and acoustic in some songs. And then scream. Like really yeah, heavy yeah. and like but but melodic too you know it was always like there'd be like melodies to his heavy heavy yeah. distortions and stuff and um, he you know. They always felt like real compositions like true. Big time. You know orchestral yeah. a lot of the time. Very orchestral and and I think people either loved or hated that band because it was about his voice right yeah like, it's oh, a, it's he's got a whine to his voice whiny. sometimes yeah very nasal but i always liked that i found it unique but rem's yeah. like that too yep yeah. everybody oh, hurt God. like you you know i could see if someone's like i fucking no. hate that song i i kind of like it but no i sure. would totally get it he's very yeah because we all like have type. someone like that you yeah. everyone even has like a celebrity or like an actor where you're like i don't know why i just don't like him i know it's so <laughs> i can't think true. of mine but like i know my mom's is ben stiller she can't stand oh that's so funny <laughs> that's like my mom with will ferrell same thing yeah she i heard people anything. say that about him she can't even watch elf i'm like are you kidding me it's so movie, weird. I wonder incredible. what it is. Is it like the person's face or yeah. is it because uh, the culture tried to like inundate Maybe. you with that person during a certain yeah. period of time and you're like, I'm fucking sick of this guy. I think that and it's sort of, um, yeah, for some people it's like a style of humor too. If they just don't get it, yeah, it's like frustrating. And then because if it then keeps doing well and that, people keep talking about right. it, it becomes more and more annoying. But we all have that, right? I mean, I think... Um, I'm trying to think of one that I... Do you have one like that, Dad? Like an actor where you're just like, I don't know why, I just don't like that person? Or they just... He's like, no, I like everyone. Let me ruminate on that. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) come back to it. Um, uh, When Our Lady Peace Clumsy came out, I don't know if you remember that record. It was like their second one. Uh, Well, yeah, that's the biggest one. That was like the... I hated that album. And like everyone on my floor at Laurentian, like loved it it got overplayed a lot big time superman's dead and uh, automatic flower and and i found yeah and i found their first record was really unique the one with star star seed yeah navid navid Navid. Navid. birdman uh, was on that too and then the second one was so so bad and oddly enough i don't know how we wormhole back to this but billy corgan was in an interview on much music 
I'm referencing much music a lot too. Must be the Strombo thing you dropped at the beginning. Oh, I've interviewed Ed the Sock and. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's so funny you did. And Ray Campanelli as oh, well. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, uh, at, at this Pumpkins interview, I think it was Suki and Lee was interviewing um, the Pumpkins. And she was like, Do you find people, because uh, you have such a unique style, do they rip off your music? Do they try and do your style? And <laughs> Billy Corgan goes, uh, I don't know. You should ask Our Lady Peace. Oh, brutal. Yeah. I never put that together. I they did have a, kind of a similar sound. It's sort of similar. It's pretty, it's not quite the yeah, same. Yeah, I don't know that but I it agree was a with bit, that. It was a bit like, I don't know. Clearly kind he of a, thought so. It's kind of a dick move to say that in an interview. 100%. On TV. Yeah. Like, that's come on. They're just a Canadian band. So trying drama. To come up, do their thing. Yeah. I mean, Our Lady Peace, I, I could take it or leave it with some of their songs. Yeah. I would never say I'm like their biggest fan, but I don't know that I would shut them off if they came on either. No, I have same. some songs by them that I enjoy or I have fond memories of because yeah. they remind me of certain like, you know, adolescent An times era. in my life. Totally. Yeah. They, like, they, uh, Navid was a great record too. I love what's that. What's the one they have where, uh, oh my God, it's like, I remember falling. Oh yeah. And I just remember I the remember videos the for a lot of oh, these. Oh, that's One Man Army. I oh, think. One Man Army. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they've got oh, some hits for sure. Just his, yeah, sometimes with his voice. But see, that's the thing, you know, people, and I had definitely, there's some pumpkin stuff that I didn't love as much, but pumpkins is definitely a, a light switch moment. And I would say later, um, you know, like bands I already mentioned, like Pavement was just so weird and so interesting. Like Stephen Malkmus is the, is the lead singer and he would sometimes talk and sing. Like he would do mm. this sort of like spoken word that he would switch to and then he would maybe like sort of scream a little bit, but his voice oh, was so weird. jangly. Like it wasn't like a heavy metal scream. It's like a very Interesting. straight, like he, he, he's just one of those people who doesn't really have any kind of vocal affectation, which is something I, I like in music too. I relate to like, it's why I, I always had a hard time getting into Pearl Jam just because of the way he sang. Oh, just yeah. Here, you know? Yeah. Uh, all, oh, no, I'm thinking of Creed. Yeah, yeah. I know. It was, I <laughs> it was mean, similar same, kind you're of, going yeah. down that same road. So whenever someone. I like Pearl Jam a lot more than Creed, though. <laughs> right. But I, I like Pearl Jam, but I guess, you know, um, I was a huge Soundgarden fan. So I saw Soundgarden in. Um, Chris Cornell. Yeah. In, uh, at Robert Gertay Arena in Hull. He's got and, quite a voice. Oh. That was one or of the hat, best. I suppose I should say. That was one of the loudest shows I've ever seen in my life. Like the the, the decibel levels were not uh, lawful. Safe for that human night. ears. No. <laughs> like da days after was like ringing. Yeah, I'm and a it, fan of that. those days. Like I think in the '90s they were just kind of testing shit out at concerts. So like, how loud can we make this? Because you go Some now, scientist on the side. No, and now okay, you, we've got four ears bleeding over here. It's never like that at shows now. Everything's very safe. Like, yeah, they have it way more dialed in. No one wants to get sued if someone has a seizure right. or something. So, uh, but that was the that was the super unknown tour, and that was a I love that record, like the whole Soundgarden super unknown. It was just so weird and like um, so well produced, like the drums, the guitars, and then Chris Cornell too. He didn't really have an affectation. I didn't find like like Pearl Jam or he just sort of sang, but he could go so high. Like yeah, his range crazy. is crazy. But I mean, his lyrics too were were wild, and uh, yeah, and I mean, when you talk about bands that have um, Joni Mitchell, I want to say too. Joni oh Mitchell yeah, for sure, a legend. Yeah, big time. And she, the Blue Album. My mom really loves Joni Mitchell. Me. Yeah, I uh, was going to ask if we can pause for a second. Can can I use your washer? Oh, of course. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll put a pin in it because I want. Or actually, before we go, let me say. Um, Shit. No, I was just... Oh, yeah. I was talking about uh, bands that um, yeah. do that speaking and singing kind of yeah. thing. Um, Cake makes me think of that because oh, he's yeah. sort of always kind of doing that. Yep. He does sing, but... And The Streets. You know The Streets? I don't know The Streets. No. That British band where he'd be like... You know, it's like, bam, 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 just like a beat. And he'll be like, so I went down to the corner store oh, and got fun. myself a drink. And he'll sing for like the chorus or something, but then he'll switch back to that oh, kind of just fun. like... Really thick accent speaking about whatever's going on. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Or it's unique, at least. It's yeah, very it different. is unique. And it has a lot of energy, so it, it gets into you. For sure. I think that's always the way I've been with music. It's like if something strikes me, it's like a little bit different, but it, it's also just, I don't know, it sounds you know, overdone or something, but to, like just unique, like it's yeah. its own. It's not trying to be anything else. Yeah. It just is what it is that I'm like, oh, yeah, I could – Really get into this. Yeah, well, that's um, what we were talking about with comedy, and it's all kind of like yeah. that, finding your true, this Be is this like person. Beck, Beck would do some of oh, that, yeah. too, Beck the talking. all over the and, place. And I mean, I think that's Odele. That was a record that I was like, whoa, what the hell what is, is this? What am I listening bizarre. to? Yeah. And every track, he had like, 
a donkey braying or something like in one of the songs. <laughs> yeah. It was so cool. Experimental, like, you could yeah, call it. Yeah. yeah. Nine Inch Nails did a lot of weird shit too. Yeah. No, for sure. Oh, I love Nine Inch Nails. Trent especially um, especially um, Perfect Drug. Yeah. That song is like, to me, well, they've got the so many good best. songs. Yeah, they do, but that's. And he's like an Oscar winner now. One like, of my favorite songs of theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. He did and the soundtrack uh, for The Social Network. And then Johnny Cash, uh, when he redid Hurt. Yeah, like, that was legendary. Uh, yeah, and I heard that. After that, Trent Reznor was like, I, I can't play that song live yeah, anymore. It's, it's his like, song yeah, now. It's, it's his. You know what I mean? Like, you couldn't. It's like, you can't. I, I mean, that video and the way that Johnny did it. He, he was a huge uh, idol to me, too. I'll say it. Johnny yeah. Cash. Oh, Johnny Cash loved is great. Him. I read Man in Black probably in my early um, early 30s. And it was man, it's such an incredible book, like hearing about how he would take... Um, the Basically, in those days, the pharmacies... We're like, oh, touring musicians, this is a new thing we don't really know. And they had to stay up for long periods of time to drive. And they were giving them meth, like, over the counter. Holy shit. Yeah, to, to keep no them No wonder awake. he had a drug problem. He had a big drug problem. And he talked about how he took he got really addicted to uppers, which I think he's talking about meth. And it was like he would be awake for four days straight. Holy and at one point, after four days or four and a half, he took this flight and basically, like, freaked out on the plane and had this episode like he was trying to like grab people and all this stuff and then he just conked out he doesn't remember landing someone i think was there with him and then he, he slept for like two days holy what? yeah that cannot be he good lived, for your brain yeah. oh and your heart your life yeah <laughs> your relationship yeah, relationship so after it was like after that that he would was sober and i mean he lived quite a long time after yeah he was like, pretty old when he years. passed away yeah 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 he was uh probably the only artist that ever made me go like okay i guess i don't totally hate country <laughs> no <he laughs> kind of pulled me in and i was like okay there's validity here I, I need to explore this genre more and not write it off as garth brooks all of it no. you know or, I mean, or reba or like and nothing yeah. against those artists i'm no. sure they have their place but it's not for me yeah oh you also need to go to the bathroom oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, no, yeah I have one more I, thing i gotta remember but i'll write it down okay yeah cool right, yeah pause where is the where is the break it? And we're back from the pee break. Um, the one thing I was trying to not forget before we took that pause Let's was um, when you were mentioning Mr. Ro Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Yep. Fred Rogers. I was going to say that yeah. is his name, right? That Obviously, is. I'm not trying to hate on him, but I will say maybe this is a hot take for me. He's trumped by Fred Penner. Oh, yeah. Because Fred Penner adds in the musical element. For sure. Well, Fred Penner and you're Canadian. Right, so there's that, but I Fred, also found Fred, Fred Mr. Rogers, Rogers from, always to be a little bit sterile in his personality yeah. and kind of just like a little too like, oh hey, how are you doing there today? Yeah, yeah. It's just like we're, what that was actually a pretty good impression, by the way. <laughs> also, did you not did did you not think they made a movie about him where Tom Hanks played? No, him? Colin Hanks, I believe. Oh no, oh, no, no it was Tom, Tom Hanks. You're Tom right. Hanks, my bad. Yeah. My bad. And um, the, I always thought that Sheldon. Whatever that guy's name is from Big Bang Theory. Oh, uh, Jim Parsons played a perfect, like a perfect Mister Rogers. Like what? Yeah, why I would they that. have never casted that? Even just the way he talks. Yeah, he sounds like him, and he looks like him a bit. Yeah, I was like, if, I can see if that. there was ever a way, I'm putting this out there. If there's ever a way to get Sheldon to do Mister Rogers and something like he would nail it. It would be eerie almost. Like, yeah, I should say I haven't seen the Tom Hanks thing or the doc it. you were talking about. I haven't seen the Tom Hanks movie, but I saw the doc was. Uh, it might have been an age thing too. Like Jim's pretty young. That's still, right. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, I was I was thinking that too. You being uh, Fred Penner over Mister Rogers, that makes sense. and Mister Dressup. That makes sense for yeah. Mister Dressup was a little weird, <laughs> but, but um, that makes sense for your age range and also being Canadian. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Fred Penner, you know. I know a couple of his kids, like I have met his daughters before, like yeah. super nice people. And um, he is just an, a Canadian icon. Oh, yeah. We chatted. He's a legend. Right there. Oh, you, you oh, sent you me a him picture of him and Elton John. No way. Um, but, super nice. Yeah, guy. he was amazing. It was Incredible. like talking to your your grandpa. Like he was yeah. just, not not to throw age thing at him or anything, but so much wisdom is what I try to oh. say there and empathy and... And, and he, massive humility. Like, yeah. Yeah. He just seemed like such a a calm soul mm -hmm. and and yeah he was talking about how he was in meditation and stuff too and he lived on this beautiful property really? out in bc with giant trees at one point we were talking but probably my favorite part of that whole podcast we did over zoom yeah uh was at one point he literally kind of paused and stopped mid-sentence and his reason for stopping was oh i just 
got distracted by the beauty of this tree in my backyard there for a second or something to that effect. And I was just like, wow, I hope to be that Zen. That is great. You know, that's what I'm striving to become one day is he just, anyways. He dropped a few caps before he got on the interview. Well, I don't know about kidding. that. I'm kidding. I'm joking. But okay. yeah, we should no, all, that's... you know, try to be a little more Fred Pennery or Mr. <laughs> yeah. Rogers or whoever your wholesome. Fred Penner is incredible. I mean, there's nothing in you saying that it's not like there's no war warring aspect in me at all about that statement like he, he's fred penner is like standalone and also the musical so thing different, adds so much so different from mr rogers like they, mr rogers he, was inside he, he was, was always inside. outside crawling yep. through the log and but mr rogers was actually one of the first uh people to in the documentary they talked about this is really interesting um he was one of the first people like one of the characters on the show i believe his first name was clarence it's a african-american guy and I think he was the mailman. Yeah, I've Anyways, seen this online so, as yeah, well. Yeah, and they um, when that was a, there was an era in whatever in the states where people were like dumping bleach into pools if, oh, there, if there are black people yeah. swimming in them, and um, yeah, it was just insane. And so Mister Rogers, as like a show of solidarity and just someone who just you know wanted to be kind to people, and it was just such an intense time with. Um, Civil race riots and, and everything yeah. so uh, he like had his mailman come on his show and they both said because the pool bleach thing was a big thing that was going on and he had his uh, mailman clarence come on and they both like sat together with this kiddie pool with both of their feet in the pool yeah which is like huge like it was especially like, for that revolutionary time. for someone to do that you know it was just like no we don't do that. Yeah, the network was probably like, yeah, we're not. They're like this is harsh. But he just he was like, no, I want to do it. So it, it's pretty cool, man. He was very much. Oh yeah, and that's why I started off by saying I'm not trying to hate on Mr. Rogers. No, like, I just like I know I, I've I, I've researched so much about him, and it's like it's hard to find um, anything really bad. Like I'm sure there is. Every human being is. Well, let's some pivot aspect. for a second. What beef do you have with Mr. Dressup? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just I know there's no beef. I just found it to be a bit. I couldn't really get into that show. Casey anyway. and Finnegan. And yeah, the puppets stuff. were a little bit lame. He and even Mr. Rogers, like sometimes his puppets were a bit scary. Yeah, yeah. Like King Friday and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, he was a bit creepy. terrifying. So, but but Mr. I, Dress I, was, I was not a puppet guy. I was never a kid who was like, I want to go out of my way to watch puppets. So I had a lot of friends, right, who were like Muppets. Oh, Muppets big are time. great. Yeah. They're cool, but I see. Do you are you a fan of Muppets and wrestling? I have a theory about this. Um, no, actually, okay, because most guys that I find are are fans of both Muppets and wrestling. Interesting together. though, yeah. but not, I don't I'm think really I would fall into not either. to break your theory, but uh, no. I've never really gotten into wrestling or enjoyed uh like you know the fictional wrestling like you weren't a hulk hogan fan or anything i mean when i was a really little kid like four or five probably in the height of all that like ultimate warrior and all that i had some figurines and stuff but as i got older i was like oh god this is so fake and yeah exactly that was me i couldn't get into it but i've had um a guest on the show actually who designed a wrestling card game that's pretty popular in the states and uh he kind of made me realize that it's very much like the superhero stuff. It's it's like yeah. once I looked through it a different lens, I was like, oh. And first of all, I never would have judged people for for liking wrestling, anyways. You no, know? no, no, no. Any fandom, I actually always kind of well, respect the commitment. It's not my podcast, so I can judge them. No, yeah. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> no. But even if you're into My Little Ponies or whatever the fuck it is, yeah. I still think fandoms are kind of cool. Just like yep. people coming together because of something they all enjoy, for sure. and just to celebrate that and have a fun time together. Like, why would you ever hate on that? Like, for yeah. whatever it is, unless it's something disturbing. But no, it's very what's true. disturbing? Even a horror festival, that's cool too. You know, like whatever your thing is. Yeah, no, it's true. Even if you look at um, Comic Con and all the people that come out, cosplay to that, and all that. No, yeah, I mean it's it's massive, and, and you know, in us just shooting the shit and giving our opinions, it's not like I'm I'm never the type of person to throw shade at anyone if they like something or brings that, you know, I would never begrudge anyone if something they do brings them some kind of joy. Like that's great. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Or just shitting on people, on things that people create instead of making stuff yourself. That always boggles my mind. You go make something and see how easy it is. Yeah. Typing on the internet, trolling it up. And it's just like, okay, really? That's how you're going to spend your energy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I get it too. Cause it's so easy to get sucked into a Facebook argument over some dumb shit that you feel passionate about. And then you really got to take a step back and be like, no, I'd rather spend this time making something that other dumb people will argue about. That's right. (laughs) Like I'd rather be that guy in this equation. And I'm sure you, 
of two, maybe, or being whatever we can don't have to talk about it, but you making something, putting out this podcast, like I'm sure you've got some maybe, I don't know, weird comments or something from people at time. Cause I've got some hate, even me being like a kind of a nobody in the grand scheme, but I've got some weird. I've been things pretty that lucky. Had. That's good. Well, with my YouTube, I set it up. So it's like uh, any, like they flag certain comments oh, for me to good. approve or deny. Yeah. And, and that's helpful to have. I still see them, but yeah. they don't just go live on, on the page. Um, and I wish I didn't have to do that, but you know, I'm a That's sensitive good. motherfucker. No, 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 me too. Um, but yeah. generally people have been pretty cool. If it's not just inane, random, weird shit, there's been maybe, we got some slack when we had the plexiglass up in the height of the pandemic, like the first six months or whatever it was. But really, I still retroactively will say I stand by that decision. We were doing what we thought. Of course. Made sense at the time. Every restaurant you went yeah, to the had banks plexiglass. and LCBO, plexiglass. they all had that shit. Yep. But people would argue that because I was vaping weed, that that's spreading it around. And I was like, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm just trying to, uh, you know. It's funny how when COVID hit, didn't you find? everyone and their mother became a scientist all of a sudden apparently it's like, oh yeah. you're an infectious disease specialist all of a sudden everyone's oh, got cool. a phd yeah. all of a sudden yeah. you've been studying this your whole life interesting yeah it's funny how that you haven't seen happened. that youtube video no <laughs> the one oh. that explains uh, microbiology oh, to how you? many like, yeah yeah with um, really bad font and spelling mistakes all the way through. oh yeah, yeah. and a, some lame soundtrack on top of that <laughs> By the, by the way, I just want to throw it out there. Ernie Coombs. Ernie Coombs, who I believe he came out of the closet before he passed away at some point. Okay. You, can, you can Google that, but I'm pretty sure. Mr. Dresso. Mr. Oh, Dresso. Ernie Coombs. Ernie Ernie Coombs. Yeah. I, did, I, I thought we should get his name out there. Ernie if you Coombs. have a chance, Google that, because I don't want to say he came out if he totally didn't. Cause, I, yeah. And well, another. I mean, you've said it now. Yeah. Now it's out I, Well, there. I'm almost positive, but I don't want to be mixing him up with, mixing him up with another, uh, you know, yeah. TV yeah. personality or something. Yeah. Um. And, and, and in that or same era, in that vein, um, you could also say Friendly Giant was in there. I don't know if you remember that show. That's remember? a little before yeah, my time, dad, I know what it is. Your dad would yeah, remember yeah, that yeah. one. That was in like, the, it started in the 50s, I think, that show. It was an old, or the 60s, yeah, or that it was, was a, it had a long look tenure. Up. Way That's right, look up, up way, way up. Way and he up. played a flute. <laughs> Uh, That's right. He played yeah. a flute and, and had Captain rooster. Kangaroo was another one. Captain Kangaroo. That was, was a US mad. one though. Yeah. Mr. Green Jeans. Mr. Green Jeans. <laughs> I don't I don't remember. <laughs> that. He was the he Hulk? would show No, Mr. Green Jeans was on Captain Kangaroo. Oh, yeah. that was a character. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was not super fluent with Captain Kangaroo other than knowing. Well, that's yeah, I mean for me, I barely remember it, and I'm older than you guys, huh. obviously. Oh, yeah. it's that old. Green? I thought it was more of a U.S. thing. That's why we it was. Maybe it was out of the U.S., but it was more my time as a kid than your time as a oh, kid. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. But I remember that show, and it was filmed. I think Friendly Giant, and I lived in Coburg for four years, and it was filmed right around there near Coburg, Ontario. Um, my wife went to school with his daughter. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She went over to his house. And was it in was it in Coburg or something like that? I uh, know it Rose would have been Heath? Don Mills. Don Mills, okay, no. yeah, but I think it was filmed near there. It's interesting. Huh. Anyways, my mom also go. graduated from Guelph. Oh, really? Yeah, that's where they met. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Well, lovebirds studying insects, <laughs> which neither of them so, do anything with insects in their I, jobs. So I wanted to ask what you studied when you were at Guelph. I I went to Guelph for English. Oh, English. I took okay. a, a minor in drama as well. Oh, okay. Which, yeah. Yeah. But mm. the, yeah, it's funny. I'm not, I know it's a big agricultural school. It's a big fine arts school. Not really known for English or drama particularly, mm. but did you, what did you study there? You, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did a couple degrees there. I did uh, undergrad in fisheries and wildlife biology. Oh, cool. And my master's was in parasitology. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, so when COVID came out, were you like asking your dad all this stuff about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely turned to him for no. I trusted his opinion over the random YouTube people. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, yeah. I researched the shit out of yeah, the yeah. vaccines and all that. And stuff. He un yeah. actually understands when he reads these studies what the fuck they're talking about. Biology yeah. major. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. So, oh, that's cool. I can't find that Mr. Dressup was gay. It's bringing up a bunch of um, <laughs> uh, Reddit boards. Mr. Rogers stuff okay. came up. Actually, it's bringing up a lot of videos that you're going to watch later on. No, well, he, so, died, he died quite a long time ago, too. Back in 2001. Oh, 2001. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I mean, so was that long ago? I hope that yeah. was not totally just something I pulled out of my ass. No. I really, I thought he came out of the closet. Yeah. But weird. Apparently, but he, he did dress up all the time. I don't know. I thought, yeah, maybe that was his outlet. <laughs> 
You're using a lot of, uh, there's a lot of terminology going on here. Dressing up, closets, pulling stuff out of your ass. I mean, who knows, right? I mean, it could have all been part of his. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I loved his show. So it was a great show. I didn't want to misrepresent. I, you know, that's one thing I hate. You can I maybe just relate. said it was great, but I said I didn't like it earlier. So I'm just backtracking. <laughs> You're just like joining on. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it was good. No. But don't you hate with podcasting when you say something that you're really confident in the moment and then in the edit you're like able to actually look it up oh, and go oh shit or you at you interview somebody which i've done a few times and you're like this is going to be a good question i bet i bet i'm going to get something out of this and, and it knock it out of the park nowhere yeah and it's like stymied and you're just like uh, okay moving yeah. on mixed gears yeah well it's um hard. I have other music stuff we can get into later, but yeah. if we're talking about podcasting, let's go there because you have a podcast. You've started, I, I believe, second season now or third? Yeah, no, second. S- number two. Welcome to Graventown. Yeah, Graventown. Yeah. Graventown. Oh, I thought it was okay. My bad. But um, I sh- it should be called Welcome to Graventown. It's a better name. So there you go. I might. I thought it to I read that. that somewhere in my research. But I I write that sometimes, and I'm always you know trying to be welcoming to people. So well, it's yeah. an interesting pod too because you do a lot of this similar interview stuff, but then you also have like solo episodes where you're just kind of yes. reminiscing or ruminating about something. Yeah. What I, motivated I, you? What prompted you to want to get into podcasting? I listened to a lot of them for a while and i loved comedy podcasts specifically so my, mine's not really comedy like it's more therapeutic you know i mean there's c- comedic parts where i will it's also getting to know stuff. people though yeah it's getting to know people and it's um i love like conversations so i get a lot of joy from that too like there's no i picked up on that yeah yeah <laughs> an right? hour or two or whatever right? monetary there's no Excuse me. There's no monetary gain for um, conversations for me. It's sort of like it's its own currency, yeah. you know. And I I love that. And there's something that I really get out of a one-on-one. And there's mine, a richness to it. It really is. And mine's yeah. all audio, so it's like I have a kind of a cool recording setup, and it's just over the phone, so I don't do Zoom or anything like that. So they they just call me on the phone. I hit speaker on my iPhone. And then I like have a decent microphone and like a pop screen filter underneath that's just recording straight from that. And I'm like talking to the phone. Oh, cool. So it's kind of fun. And I feel like, you know, um, and I love what you do too. And I love watching video podcasts too. And it's like eventually, you know, I'd, I'd like to do that. But it's like, um, I'm yeah, sure love, some people just listen. To I love this the audio. Yeah. And I love the audio vibe and just how relax people can be and i don't like zoom like i i mm. really despise that during the pandemic when you're looking at each other and then you're like looking at yourself and you i don't know can i just so, say that uh based on the views on my channel people in general don't like zoom episodes yeah, it's <laughs> really interesting right it's, i've had uh, some guests where i'm like how is this not getting more views but people just associate with like the pandemic now yeah, i think and i think that is it and, it, and it's just it can be a little more stiff and i think on the phone sometimes two people like your guest that you're talking to could literally be naked. You know what I mean? They, they could be wearing nothing or whatever. That's how they're comfortable. If they're comfortable, that's right. And so it's like on Zoom, there's a They could be in the a, bath or whatever. I get what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Even to come over here, I was sort of like, oh, I, you know, you film it and stuff. And I was like, what am I going to wear? But I, I, I don't mind that too. Like I perform and stuff as well. Yeah. But it's like there is something that you get the unguarded part with the, the phone interview. But then I, I do love doing the solo episodes where I just kind of riff and i don't really have like i'll have like a general idea of where i'm going to go and recently a couple friends connected to me we don't have to go too far into it but passed away and um mm. one was a a close friend and so i just kind of wanted to like talk about that and get through it it's and, like, like therapy totally yeah yeah and um, it's like a journal or something i don't want to say it it like is. a journal yeah but... ju- yeah journal it's a journal <laughs> I developed I think an, ac- an accent for one word <laughs> you developed an accent and an accent. Uh, you're, you're having a yeah you do it you were doing my so, you, you almost did a walk in there an accent my, my journal my journal tree <laughs> Everyone does Christopher Walken, right? And usually not very good. Either. I'm trying to do a Jeff Goldblum right now, actually. That's great. Let's hear it. No, no. I mean, I'm trying, so I'm fledgling at this mm. point. But it's mainly because I wanted to do a bit about him. Um, you got the voice. Actually, you could, you uh, could get the... He, he just, he just kind of does something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, right. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, kinda... yeah, the yes, yes. I've learned a couple techniques. That's um, so great. But I wanted to do just a bit about him like I love auditioning Goldblum, for um, Jurassic I love Park him. and reading the script oh. and being like... 
Oh, there's a, oh, there's a, the T Rex in here. Yeah. I, I actually had tea with a man named Rex once. <laughs> he was an older fellow, uh, almost like fossil, you could say. Yes, that's yes, yes. Gross. It's not that good. But. Yes, yes, yes. That's good, man. I'm gonna he, spend the next couple of days trying to hone it. There was a great um, a thing called Seven Minutes in Heaven, which was on YouTube. I think this guy, I don't know his name, Joe, uh, Mike Jones or something. Anyways, he was on. Portlandia for a while. He's oh, cool. a sketch yeah, yeah. comedian. That's like an guy. improv type show, right? Yeah, very improv and Fred this, Armisen. This guy would have people come into his closet, like big names, like Paul Rudd, Will Ferrell, Tina Fey, um, Kristen Wiig, like tons of people. Jeff yeah. Goldblum. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. Seven it was really good. It, it was, was really good. cool. And I don't, I don't think it's going anymore, but I think it's his name's Mike Jones. I could be wrong. Anyways, you can look it up. Seven Minutes in Heaven. Very funny. And he had Jeff Goldblum in, and that's one of the funniest episodes. Um, because at the end of any episode, even if it's a woman or a man, they do like a, a kiss. Like they get really close and just do like a really weird kiss on the <laughs> lips. So just like a peck. And it's always awkward to see. And as they're that kissing at the end, yeah, Jeff Goldblum's kind of like smelling him. He's like, wait, okay. And he's getting close to him. He's like, wait, I, I smell uh, I, a, a, a baby musk. powder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, <laughs> but there's, they do this sketch with, with Jeff Goldblum where um, he goes, okay, we're going to do an improv scene where... We are paying, <laughs> it's the most insane thing, but he's like, we're paying for lunch. Uh, we just had lunch together and we're fighting over the check, like who's going to pay. And then right as we're fighting over the check, you, Jeff, realize that you're working at an orphanage nearby and you left the stove on. <laughs> and so he, like, he, and he's like, oh, okay. And then he does it and it's like perfect it's so amazing like how he does it he's just like they're like okay well i, I really good lunch and he's like yeah good and jeff's like yeah and they're like he's mike's like i want to pay for it and jeff's like no 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 i insist no you can't and he's like no and then she's like no i insist oh my god i i'm, I'm working at this orphanage nearby i think i left the, the stove on i got i got i got to go i'll talk to you later <laughs> like it was just so perfect like how he like spun out of it and did his you know as they call it gold blooming yeah, he started, yeah. He started gold. He's just such, such a unique individual yeah. in the way that he carries himself. Totally. Like he's just inc like I'm Christopher Walken. Totally. It's just such a. There's nobody else like them. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I heard that Christopher Walken apparently didn't even really want to be an actor. He he was a dancer. Oh well, yeah, he did so dance in that Fat Boy Slim video, weapon, right? weapon of choice. Yeah, yeah, great video. Yeah, he apparently just dancing was his thing. That's really what he wanted to do, and then he sort of. Wow. Got an acting happenstance, but it makes sense because, what like what other actor in the world can you say looks or sounds like Christopher Walken? Nobody, yeah. right? He's just so unique that they were like, we can plop this guy into any role and he'll just be. Yeah, because there himself. are other actors where they're kind of like interchangeable to a degree. That's where right. It's like we need an action star. And yeah, then you yeah. Pick one from like a lineup, you know. Yeah, exactly. No, that's true. Yeah, Walken is his own. Okay, so, uh, well, I'm going to go back to the list at this point and try to keep us on track here a little bit. Um, let's go with uh, talking about the fact that you name drop a lot of Canadian cities in your songs. Oh, yeah. Uh, there That's is true. Kingston, the shores of Victoria, Edmonton Eyes, uh, Niagara. That's just a few. And it had a very tragically hip vibe in that sense, I will Ooh. say, because they're throwing out Bob Cajuns and... You know, sure. a lot of obscure Canadiana here and there. Um, so that makes me want to ask if you there's a, like a favorite city that you've found along your travels that you just freaking love that really stands out and shines. And if there's any uh, locales that you would never frequent again. Oh, man. It's funny. Like you, you said that Edmonton Eyes song, like Edmonton was a tough place for me. I didn't. Love okay. It. No. And it was just very, I was just there briefly um for one day on this tour maybe like 36 hours or something Damn. and um and it left that bad of an impact yeah it was Shit. it was tough i i played a show with my friend ali and um yeah weird things happened that night and it was sort of like there was some uh karaoke involved inside of a trailer park and there were a bunch of really drunk, angry expats who were there. Oh, that's not great. And uh, yeah, it was right, also... That sounds very situational, not necessarily like Edmonton's fault. No, it was not Edmonton's fault, but it also I just found it to be a very, um, yeah, sort of bleak place. Like there were like White Avenue, I went down in Edmonton is a very cool part of Edmonton. And But I think at that time, this is like 2016, so it's not current day. I mean, it could be totally thriving, but at that time they were having a real hard time with Businesses shutting down, places it just it just felt very like 
bleak and sad and dark and like the tough times. Anyone you talk to, like who Ali had worked there before, my friend Ali McCormick, who's a musician, shout out. Um, she is a great person and she'd worked there for a while, and, but she was like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to feel going back here. She was sort of conflicted. Oh, no. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was tough. And yeah. 36 we, hours. We stayed took in, all that in. We but. stayed in the trailer park that night. And then, um, yeah, there was some other stuff that ha- <laughs> weird stuff that happened. I don't really want to get into <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. But no, it was just very uh, no pressure there. No, no, it was uh, okay. So Edmonton, <laughs> no, not <laughs> don't go there. But apparently. you know what? Hey, but if there are people from Edmonton who I know, there's a really great musician who I talked to named Zero Stella. Her real name's Liz, and she's from Edmonton, and she's great. And there's lots of people. Like Edmonton has a scene that's got its own vibe. I know nothing about it. I was just there for a, yeah, such a short amount of time. Don't go to karaoke at a trailer park yeah. in Edmonton, and you'll probably have a good trip. With, with angry, drunk expats. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's... Add that into the mix, too. But no, uh, for for gems or cities that I like. Um, Places that, yeah, like really resonated with you. and I loved, Yeah, you know, Victoria was one of those places for sure. Um, I went there on the same tour in 2016, and. It was just beautiful. I mean, just very friendly people, unending shores, um, just a a great vibe. But I didn't really, there was never a part of me that felt like, oh, I could live in BC. I knew a lot of people who lived out there and I knew that jobs were sometimes tough to come by. Rent was really high. Everything, cost of living is pretty insane. Um, that's the no snow rent you're paying right very there. Snow, no, no snow rent, right. And it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, like having friends, I had a friend who, who moved out there and that year and who was texting me, you know, on like January 15th being like, well, it's 14 degrees and sunny outside today. I'm just like, fuck, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's beautiful. And, uh, I love Victoria, but in the same way and in a very different way, I love Halifax. Like I love that whole region of Nova Scotia. I love Dartmouth too. Like um, I've always felt like East coast wise in Canada, there's something, a part of me that feels very at home there. Like I feel like I can just be myself and I've met people on the East coast as I don't, I'm sure you've met East coast Canadians too. They're have, all, yeah. all over the map, but I've never th- been there. Though. Oh really? Well, no. I love it, but it's very, it's just very friendly in the sense of not just, people being generally friendly, but people really welcoming you in and being like, Hey man, I've just known you for like two hours at this party we're at, but I feel like we're like best friends now. And I know everything about you. That's like a common occurrence on the East coast. I feel oh, like. wow. It's very like disarming. Like people are very like, I want to get to know you. Like, who are you kind of thing? Right. Yeah. Whereas here in Ontario or different spots where we live, people can be very guarded and it takes a while sometimes to become. Well, we just talked about this on the previous episode with Fiona O'Brien comedian from originally from Ireland. Oh, cool. So we're thinking Ireland, the East coast has a lot of those roots. Maybe mm-hmm. that's the connection there. The East coasters are, they've got remnants of that Irish uh, friendliness. Oh, that's cool. Is that very Irish too? That like instant. That's what she told me. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's cool. what I learned on the last episode wow. that my outgoing nature and wanting to meet people and come podcast in my basement, all that shit yeah. is uh, my Irish roots, apparently. Oh, no, you would you would fit right in there, man. It's the best. I honestly said that to my friend Charles when I was there recording Simple Complex just um, about a year and a half ago. And I texted him like the third day that I was there and he was recording with me on on the record and Charles was like the first friend as we were talking about earlier who like really ushered me down the path of music and I was like I think I just want to record in my basement and put songs on the internet and he was like no I think you should tour you should go play these songs to people like you should really do it and I was like whoa at 25 you know it just blew my mind and I was like okay and that scared me cuz I didn't want to do that I wanted to be more of like a bedroom musician and I'm releasing stuff but you know, it it pushed me in a different direction, and I, I was like, "Yeah, that was a challenge for me." I didn't love performing in the beginning; it didn't come naturally to me at all. It was very difficult, but over time, you know, I've grown to love it. And I mean, without him saying that, without me going to Halifax to like go out there and record, that experience wouldn't have happened. And when I was just out there recording Simple Complex, I, I texted him like the third day I was there, and I was like, "You know, there's something about." Halifax and Dartmouth where I just feel like these are my people and I just feel like I fit in 
and I don't feel like an outsider. I felt like an outsider for a lot of my life. So it's a great feeling to feel that, you know? It's well, yeah, beautiful. when she was telling me that everybody in Ireland is so friendly and outgoing and wants to talk, like the idea for me, especially with my anxiety, of going to a place where it's like, wait, everyone talks too much here? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm not, I'm, everyone's going to be cutting each other it's off, totally. but we're all going to be cool about it. No, oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, man. that's like, yeah, so much lifted off my shoulders. I mean, yeah, I've tried to it. sort of, um, you know, not like calm that, but you know, you definitely get certain people where you're like, okay, I got to tamper this a little yeah, bit. I know. But generally, my my true nature is is like, fuck it, like let's just be friendly. And yeah. if you say something stupid, I've got we'll, that vibe from you we'll too. Figure like, it just out in chatting back and forth. I totally get that vibe. And I yeah. love that. I'm more that way as well too. I don't. But like... when you lean too hard into it, I've learned you can become inconsiderate sometimes if you think yeah, as long as I'm true. friendly and outgoing, then. No one can have anything negative to say no. about me, but you, you know, can border on, you know, people's personal space or yeah. whatever. You know, lots of things can come up from that. Absolutely. You, can, you can still be a dick. You can. But but you might not be trying to be a dick if your no, no, intention but, is really just like, I want to make friends and you're all, yeah, you know. But you, so you're inadvertently, you can still be a dick. Yeah, you're being obnoxious, maybe, yeah. I would say. By the way, I have to interject again, guys, because uh, I read up in, about Ernie. So he had a wife and kids. Okay. Right. I was completely wrong. Or, yeah, oh boy. And nothing to substantiate your statement, Ollie, right. at all. Interesting. Okay. And in fact, they did a uh, an internet poll because you weren't the only one to have that question in your head, right? Because you know, he's a I very, think I might be mixing it up with something else I read about Mr. Rogers because when I Googled mm -hmm. it, I got Mr. Rogers well, stuff. Well, whether it's Mr. Rogers or Ernie Coombs, Mr. Dress Up, uh, male entertainers for young children – the, the and at least those guys they they're very gentle souls yeah and, that's true and so that yeah. gets kind of picked up as being effeminate yeah, yeah especially and, back in that time yeah but but interestingly enough although with mr dress up that question had come up as well when they did that poll 76 percent of respondents thought he was straight so oh, okay yeah interesting anyway i would voting have on people and i think the wife and kids <laughs> You know, kind of leans that way pretty Well, straight. yeah, I did not. Nobody know can where. know in their heart of hearts, right? But Yeah, I mean, know. I'm not going to edit it out. We've done the research now. No, no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I don't know what it is I was thinking or why that idea was in my head because I don't funny. even find him to be very effeminate or any of no. those things that mm. I would have saw as markers for oh, but maybe gentle and playful and all that kind of I stuff. I mean, you know, yeah, but maybe he just loves kids and he, yeah, like, exactly. You know, I never really yeah, would yeah. have leaned that way, but for some reason I had that memory in my yeah. head. So we're all, we're I all, just, we're all getting canceled after this. We're canceled well, no, I think we've done our due diligence. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, want exactly. to be fair to fair in their statements. So that's I'm true. Yeah, I mean, originally really, saying it was a little bit sloppy, but again, I, for some reason I was convinced no, I had heard that. I'm just joking. It was a dream or something. It's a, it's really interesting there. That's what I thought going to see the Mr. Rogers documentary. I was like, Oh, this is going to be an expose he's going to be a bad person there's going to be all these things found out about him right because it's just how many times in history have child entertainers turned out to be bad apples in some way like something weird has but happened isn't that kind of like I mean, I'm, and sure I'm not saying true. that in terms of someone coming out of the closet i'm saying in terms of oh weird stuff has happened with them and chill with children yeah or whatever like just yeah because they're around kids so much i don't know it's just a vibe that we all have and i think we have a lot of mistrust in our society, right? Like it's very hard to be like, this person seems genuine. They seem very cool. They seem like a good dude or whatever. It's very hard for us as, as we've seen so many, um, that use the term like bad apples in our lives to, yeah. to like let your guard down. Well, that's what to I was just like, going to say. I think actually, the assumption is always to assume that someone might be there to screw you over yeah. or, you know, like if someone's being kind, it seems suspicious. Right. And that's the weird thing. Like, especially if yeah. you're a, ch a children's entertainer, you're like d dialing that up and you're being yes. like, like Mr. Rogers, welcome to my home. Like everything is so friendly that it seems like, well, there's got to be, this is a little bit too nice, I know. you know? And yeah. it's weird that we've been conditioned that kindness is suspicious, you know? Yeah. That is really strange. What a weird right. thing. Anyway. We're yeah. going all over the place. No, it's all, all I'm right. sorry, Mr. Tressa. I feel really bad about Tough that. About Not that, that being gay would be bad, but I just don't want to misrepresent one of the guys yeah. I grew up watching. No, it's. Uh, <sighs> I honestly thought that too. Like when you said it, maybe there's another um, child entertainer. Thank you. I appreciate the solidarity. No, no, no. There. I really. <laughs> I thought there was someone who it came out much later. Yeah, maybe I'm mixing them up with like the guy from Blues Clues or something. Maybe <laughs> different yeah, generation. Who knows? Um, let's talk about. Well, I mean, there's so much here I could talk to you about. I have so many more notes. Do whatever but I feel you like want. we're already going a while. 
Um, okay, quick one. Yep. An instrument you wish you could play. I like asking musicians Ooh. this that you can't, but you would love to like just be able to rock solos on or whatever. Uh, yeah, I think I'd love to be really good at. Like I can play piano enough. I took piano lessons when I was younger, um, but I'm more. I just in life became more of a guitar, bass, drums guy. Drums is actually the first thing that I, I played, and now I can play them like just five, five and a half out of ten. Like I'm not very good. I can hold a beat and I'm like okay at them. But and I've recorded them on on the new record, like in, in the stuff I'm going to release from Raven Street. Like I played all the drums. Oh, okay. But so I can do it. I'm not very good, and I should play in a. Band. But you don't need like crazy solos no. on the drums for folks. It would be songs bad and stuff. Yeah, but like yeah, drums, guitar, bass, and vocals. Like those are just kind of my things. And I've gotten into piano a little bit more recently. Like I actually played piano at a show on one song. It's very basic, but I'd love to be able to really yeah play. Yeah, when you see, it's it. an impressive one to watch when someone's very just impressive. slamming those keys yeah. and doing the whole body language of oh, it. Oh, it's wild, man. Yeah, yeah, Elton John, Billy Joel, like. um yeah, it's it's an incredible instrument and just how yeah, you just sit down at this box and just these incredible sounds come out and your fingers, you know, moving a certain way and the speed and sometimes not even the speed like just doing it. I mean, it's there's something it, so ancient about it it's too. It's pretty ancient, yeah. And you it's know? actually the if anyone is thinking of giving their kids lessons of any kind of sort to begin in music it's the best one to start your kids oh is at. it because it's just you sit down at a bench and you literally just press these keys and a sound comes out like um a while ago a friend was saying they wanted to teach their kid violin and i was telling that to charles my buddy out east and he was like don't do that don't yeah. get them to teach violin because it's like you're sitting on this you know stool or chair you have to hold this thing very strangely like on your shoulder and then also use this bow yeah. which is non-intuitive at all like sitting down at this box with these keys on it and you just hit them a certain the violin way. just seems like a like a buzz kill instrument it's a, it's a hard one i mean it has its too. beautiful spots but like for a kid like like no. a six-year-old and even and why do i always picture a little asian girl I don't know. <laughs> i'm sorry if that's I don't know. out of line to what's say ha- that what's happening here i no, picture like a mean asian dad being like <laughs> get yeah. that finger placement right or whatever yeah uh, no. I, i'm sure i've seen that in tv somewhere i'm sure but a um also guitar not an easy instrument to learn for young kids. Like you got to get the calluses on your fingers. Yeah, and your first and the strumming down. right. Yeah, and it's yeah. really there's a lot of layers not, to guitar. It's not an easy instrument. So, I think yeah, piano is a really good basic one, and a lot of I feel music. like saxophone. Saxophone would be those. cool to some try people even really rock a yeah. sax or a harmonica. Harmonica is cool if you're yeah. like uh, one of those really bluesy ones. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I think um, one that uh, instrument that'd be really fun to master two would be um the keytar you know like the weird owl you know i knew it was gonna be a weird one yeah i thought you were gonna say like the theremin or something no well that one too i actually know i know a guy in ottawa who plays that name remy royale he performs it why do i know that name house of targ sometimes yeah i've definitely heard that name and he has a theremin and he uses it and it's cool yeah it's cool to watch i mean it's like it uses your energy and stuff like electromagnetism yeah electromagnetism it's bizarre didgeridoo did you redo? It would be a cool. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something about the theremin. It's kind of a sciencey instrument, you know. Yeah, did you redo as well? It's very did you redo? Sciencey. Yeah, I don't know. That one's. I guess Just it's interesting. It does sound pretty cool. Deep vibration like, that I'm sure like whoa, 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 loosens people's whoa, whoa. stool in their bowels or something like that. Yeah. Oh, does it? I've never I mean, heard I that. feel the like brown note. the brown note. Yeah. yeah Did you watch South that Park. league? Oh, that was oh that was South Park. I'm sure it's been on several things. It was oh, on the league. It was on the league too. Yeah. 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 I was a I great thought it episode. was on South Park also. Maybe I'm I'm mixing it up again. Uh, mixing was... things up everywhere. <laughs> That's right. Mr. Dress Up's gay. Brown notes from South Park. We're just spraying I think everything's that one coming is true. out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all good. Yeah, yeah. no uh instruments are, are, are fun, but yeah, they're Would not. Would it be fun. crazy they're after all that people. someone random person watching this show was Mr. Dress Up's ex lover and no, he just like him. sheds a single tear? <laughs> Someone was Maybe. finally close to uncovering their yeah. true love. Oh no, my god! Sorry, um, apologies to his wife no, if she's don't. still alive. No, it's fine. She's probably not. You got to do what you got to do. Did you see the new um, Chris Rock special? I have not seen uh, it, but I've heard a lot of people yeah. arguing about it. You would like <laughs> it. Social media. Yeah. I watched the first like twenty minutes last night. Yeah, and I have to say, I don't think it was the very good. No, especially 
Chris has got this pattern now, at least in that show, where he says the setup for the joke, pauses, yeah. and then he says the setup for the joke, word for word exactly, a second time. Maybe it's helping him remember. Or well, something. once I thought, okay, he's doing it for emphasis or something. Yeah. But as I watched more, he did it every goddamn time. Interesting. That's going, man, Weird. You, what's wrong here? Like, yeah. Interesting. Anyway. Well, he's still he's still mentally recovering from that slap from Will Smith. That's probably all. <laughs> well, I'm, you know what? I think there's truth truth to that. But uh, he did a big recovery, I guess, at the end when he got it all off his chest and yeah. really, yeah, it was that was cool. I mean, uh, hmm. I watched some of it and it was not. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I didn't like you didn't blow it. me back, but um, it was cool to see. Because I've him enjoyed doing previous something. specials from yeah. him for sure. But he's almost he's almost become so huge in the sense of like he's acting. You know, he was in that Saw uh, movie. Like it was a yeah. There was oh a, yeah, there was yeah, a, yeah. It was like the reboot. Like he's kind doing of thing. more, and he's getting in more mm. bigger roles where he's like more dramatic. And I think he is a really good actor. I think he's extremely talented. He was in. He was in a wasn't it a new Fargo or like a couple of years ago it now. Yeah, he played like a like a, the the black sort of. Uh, um, gang, it was, uh, like all these different gangs, the Irish gang, the huh. Italian gang, uh, and okay. then there's the black gang, and was he was the, kind of the leader of them. Was that the one with Billy Bob Thornton, that Fargo? Uh, he was in the movie, I well, know. He's, but wasn't he in the show too? I never watched either. No, Billy Bob <laughs> was in the show only. Oh, the, was he? Yeah. Oh, the movie okay, was... Um, the sh the show has the number of seasons. Every season is a di completely so he different was in story. That? Yeah, okay. Oh, so yeah. he was in one season. Yeah. yeah. He was in the first one, I think. Interesting. Well, Chris was, I think, in the third or the fourth okay. one. Yeah, yeah it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Billy, Bill, I did yeah. loosely talking yeah. about information. Yeah, that we now all I got to go look that up. Yeah, <laughs> sure. He was in um, one of the best movies, speaking of rap, going, going back to rap, it was CB4. It was an old movie about a rap group that sort of became famous. It's a total comedy, but it's sort of making fun of the whole era of the rap. hustle. The, the hustle yeah, and like yeah. the, the insanity of like, oh, you got to appear this way and be... You know, so CB4, I think, well, yeah, was the name of the rap group, and Chris Rock was in it. Very funny, like, yeah, I've never heard of that funny movie. Yeah, I check that out. And, um, I mean, Chris Rock has done so much, not like this is the Chris Rock podcast, he was SNL right? back in the day, yeah. No, he's hilarious, he's so unique. But I agree, I saw some of the special, and it, it didn't blow me back. I was sort of excited to see how, how it would be, but... Um, I feel yeah. obliged to watch it now just because of all the stuff I've already seen on social yeah. media of people arguing. I saw... I'm in a Simpsons fan group, and they put it up, something about how, you know, there's the thing in the Simpsons about um, local man yells at clouds or something like that. And it, they were saying that basically, like, Chris Rock's new special is he's this old guy who's just yelling at the clouds. It's a lot of that, yes. It's a lot of him talking about, like, how Not being he able to keep it up with Yeah, just, just not not liking woke culture, not mm. liking a lot of that stuff. And it it's sort of, you know, in comedy, I think you just have to be whatever, and it sounds so vague in general, but you really do have to be yourself. And I think there's low hanging fruit, right? In comedy all the time, as you yeah. see, like there's just jokes that um, people want to make. And his whole special is called selective outrage. So yeah. I think that's sort of funny because it is like he is, he has selective outrage too about certain things, about woke culture, about all these things. But it's, it's yeah, there are some funny jokes. Like I like some parts of it but yeah i hadn't seen him do any kind of i don't know do you remember the last time he did a stand-up thing like it's been I, like time. the ones i watched were from way like yeah. in the 2000s or something ago. yeah you're talking about crystal is yeah, two, yeah, crystal. 2018 he was his last netflix oh. stand-up special uh, yeah. Yeah. i don't yeah. know that i watched that yeah and he was in season four of fargo doing oh, exactly go. what i said he was leader of a, a black crime Okay. Group. I'm yeah. just watching the uh, Marvel superheroes screen go by. Uh, yeah, we got to play that after. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, okay, well, I guess we've talked about. I still have more music questions, yeah. but I feel like let's there's. Do let's do some random ones too. We've done the podcasting stuff. I was going to ask you what's the biggest thing that you've learned through interviewing creative types. Hmm. Interesting. Because I also read that you did music blogging for Thick Specs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 great. I did... Uh, Digging deep on you. You really did dig deep. Holy shit. Thick Specs was a Toronto magazine magazine online blog that was around for a while. And the guy who ran it was this guy named Dave Ulrich. Um, 
who was the drummer for a band called the Inbreds. And Inbreds were on, yeah, great name. Right? <laughs> uh, Inbreds were on Murder Records with the Thrush, 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 Thrush Herman and Sloan and those bands we were talking about, Superfans, okay. in that same pocket for a while. They were like a Halifax transplant, like they came from a different town and moved out there. Hmm. Two-man band, too. Mike O'Neill and Dave Ulrich. So Dave played drums and Mike O'Neill played bass, but it was like distorted bass and he sang... So sort of like an earlier version of the white stripes, death from above. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. Same. Yeah. But same vibe. Yeah. Or like white I was thinking the black keys too. Yep. It's just a drummer and a guitarist. Totally. For the most part. So, um, they were very, a great band. And I just was, I don't even know how I got in touch with Dave, but I was writing a lot because I went to school for journalism too. So I should say that like after I got my English degree from Guelph where your dad went and minored in drama, then I went back to school for journalism at Algonquin. And I was an intern at CBC. So oh, I was cool. really down the writing path for a while. And like, I loved the like long form interview stuff that I would hear, like Terry Gross from NPR. It's probably one of my favorite interviewers of all time. If you've never heard any of her stuff, like she's an incredible interviewer, just able to go with the flow of guests and be like, oh, we're going to go down this rabbit hole. Okay, let's do that. But also would definitely have, you know, a script or an outline that she was following to get through to a certain thing. Like just incredible. Actually, we were talking about um, Johnny Cash earlier, yeah. right? And Johnny Cash was on one of those episodes. It's called Fresh Air with Terry Gross. And uh, at the end of it, just showing what a gentleman and a great guy Johnny was, like really paying attention. At the end of the interview, you can hear um, she's sort of like, well, yeah, thank you, Johnny, for coming on. And he's like, you know, I, I do a lot of these interviews, and uh, you're really good at your job. You're a very good uh, interviewer. Thanks for thanks for having me today. Like he really like cool. paid attention to like that would mean so much to me yeah. as a host of someone. You you are very good. Oh, this, I, I was not and fishing not, for I that know, at no, all. But, but I'm saying this to you in the thank you, play. thank you. I appreciate that. You are great at it, man. And it's like uh, it's a special skill. And I think that talking to people and you know knowing when to pause or when to ask or what, you know, it's, it's a real interesting science. And I was always, well, the craziest thing is that every person is so different. Yep. Totally. So it's like, you can't, you can't know how to do any of it until you've sat down with that person. That's you can right. have like a framework that you're trying to, you know, use as your guiding, you yeah. know, your true North, your mission or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But really you have to interact with the person for a bit and then things start to ooze out and you can kind of empathetically get in yeah. there, you know? It's funny That's how that happens. creepier than it should have. Yeah. You're like, you got to get in there. You wait until things get yeah, moist. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Dress up. In the yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's really hard, man. And so kudos to you for doing... How many episodes have you done now? This is 92. Whoa. Very cool. I'm, yeah. I'm at like... We're close. I'm not even at 40. I'm almost at 40. So good for you, man. That's great. Well, this is over like, uh, I guess it, we hit the three-year mark last October. Oh, so this great, is though. season four now, but it's really three and a half years. And the first couple seasons, we did like 33, 32 episodes mm -hmm. each. And yeah. then season three was like 18 episodes. And this one, I mean, it remains to be seen, but Very cool. we're keeping that pace. So I don't know. You know, I kind of take them as they go. And it's great. You get bursts of doing a bunch of episodes, but you life do. life happens too. Family comes first, and it you know, does. mental health comes first. We were talking about this. It's really hard, and I I find that too. It's it's something that, as you know, I mean, you have like a video element, which I, I don't have anything like that. But the the amount of time I'm sure that you spend editing is probably a lot. Right? Yeah, because even though I'm not cutting out a lot of content, there's sometimes sound issues or right. just just generally like yeah i go through it at least to make sure there aren't things i should be cutting out not uh -huh. content really but glitches or whatever it is i kind of mm -hmm. maybe it's just my ocd i like to sort of re-listen to the whole episode no, this cool, one man. i might have to skim through it's I'm pretty a, long already i'm a fan so i've listened to some of yours i mean i i actually didn't know till you till you mentioned i know we were chatting about it at the break but i didn't even know that you had Strombo, like George Stropolopoulos on here, but he's been someone who's very compl complimentary to me in my music career. And like he was doing live streams during COVID, during the early lockdowns. Um, he still does them once in a while. And he had me on a few times, like doesn't even know who I am, didn't know anything really about me. And, and I ended up in this message group called the LNC, shout out to the LNC. And it's like the late night crew. And um, yeah, he's just someone who really, he, will kind of go out of his way sometimes to prop people up and like prop up 
musicians and other people. So it's cool. Most that, definitely. Yeah, it's cool that you've. That's exactly how we felt. We were yeah. like just nobodies, and he had all these other you know previous engagements ready to go for the next so day. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, he stayed like an hour longer than we, we were told we would have with him That's from amazing. his manager or agent or whatever she is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sweetest guy and amazing guy to sit down and talk yeah. with. And really, yeah, I can't thank him enough. He's amazing. And, and a guy who really knows how to cradle a mic. Yeah. 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 yeah he was, so just was like his girl. So natural. You know? And yeah, especially he's... for me being on episode 15, I was just in awe. I mean, beyond the fact that I watched this guy on, you know, the hour or forever. At one right? point it was called yeah. Dr George Strombolopoulos tonight, yep. I think. Um, but yeah, that show, I used to work security and I would on my breaks, like find it or not even on my break, but on the patrols you were doing, you would end up in someone's like office area, you know, sort of neutral chilling zone for the employees. And you yeah. just turn on the TV, take a little you know, a five, 10 minute break. And it so was cool. such a, yeah, nice escape from that job. Well, he's, it's so funny. It's great that he, he came here and you were telling me how he played like video game over there with you after. Yeah. And um, like, so my friend went to be, um, Whistler cause he was out there. He's in, really involved in movies now. Like he's kind of directing and doing, I think he's acting a bit too. Like he's really in the um, kind of independent movie scene. Anyway, my friend Mark, went out to BC and I think he was a bit like, I'm going to, cause you know, he'd seen me on his live streams and it, he, when my album simple complex came out, um, George tweeted it out and he has like a, almost a million followers oh, yeah. and stuff. And it was really cool. And, oh, you know, he didn't eyeballs. have to do that. Yeah. It was really nice. And, um, also, uh, my, so my friend Mark went to Whistler and he, he actually, he lives out there, Mark, uh, Chiron, and he went up to him at this festival because he saw he was walking around and it was like, oh, Strombo's here. And he was like, I'm going to ask him even if he like knows Maddie or if he knows, you know, kind of like, I think he wanted to test him sort of. And he was like, Hey, um, good to meet you, George. He's like, I'm, I'm from Ottawa. And you know, you've had this guy on a couple times on your live stream, um, who I, I like, and you know, I know him is he's called Graven and, and without missing a beat, like right away, George was like, Maddie. Yeah. Good guy. Good yeah. guy. You know, like he just was. He remembers like, your he, name. You know, he's absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's, he's a class act. He just seems like a rad dude. So yeah, I've so never so. met him in in real life, but we've talked a couple times, and he's just yeah, it's great. And uh, you also had Rebecca on here, who's a local. Oh yeah, musician. yeah. My my dad got to meet her. Too. Abbott. We were both. Is that her last uh, name? Uh, Rebecca Noel is Rebecca what Noel. she goes by for yeah. uh, stage. Yeah, but I believe unbelievable Abbott might be musician. The, yeah, and, very uh, very such a nice person too. We were yeah. talking about after just like what a cool guest she was and and what a sweet person she was see i'm a fan i watch your podcast you know what I mean? no i appreciate yeah. it thank you well like i said i had that message from you years ago before saramo even I came know. on so it's so fun that's you know this was long overdue and it's it's been very fun man yeah, um really cool i'm trying to like stay aware of the time i have so much stuff it's here. okay go for it uh, I, don't, I don't care oh this is just a fun one actually what's something that you're absolutely terrible at that what's the first thing that jumps to your mind oh man what am I terrible at? I'm I'm pretty terrible at general sciencey stuff. Like I tried to take uh, so in in high school, I know your, your dad is like, oh man, get this guy out of here. What the hell? <laughs> no, but uh, in high school, I had this teacher named Mr. Hayes at Sir Robert Borden, and um, I got a like a thirty two in his. It was things like grade ten science. That's like, bad. It's just terrible, <laughs> and I uh, just couldn't. You know, we're using the Bunsen burners and stuff like that, and it just wasn't You're like lighting my cigarettes. Will. Yeah, I just no, I wasn't even a smoker. I was a Christian. I just oh, that's it, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, was, you were no, too clean cut for that. But no, I was like, no, yeah, I, I, science stuff never. And then in university, I took a botany course at University of Guelph. And Light, lighting I was, something else I worked, on those Bunsen I worked burners. so hard, so hard to pass that course. Like I tried, like I studied more in that class. It was like a second year course because um, I had to get, I think, one science credit for my arts degree. And I, I worked my ass off to, to pass that class, 48. They got a 48. Like they wouldn't Damn. even you just really not push me science. across <laughs> that. No, they wouldn't push me across that. To be fair, mark. science and Catholicism often are at odds. Yeah. So maybe you but were over the years being bit, told dinosaurs weren't real by your family or something. But then I actually took... Um, the way I got around it eventually. I still have anxiety dreams about not having one credit left in my degree and and like mm. not having 
um, there's a class that I still have this dream. I had it even a couple of weeks ago. Like I'm 46. I graduated from Guelph in like 2002. Okay. It's a long, 20 long years time ago. ago. Okay. Long time ago. 21. Like, I, I took like a little bit longer to get my degree. But anyways, um, I still have dreams where there's like a class that I haven't gone to for years. And I see someone in the halls or something like, hey, the, the final's coming up. You haven't been in class for like years, man. What's going on? And I'm like, oh my God. A panic. Like, yeah, the panic. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I had a dream like that, a school dream that I haven't had recently, but I remember having in my adult life and it was like not being prepared for this play that I had to do. Right. And that was something from high school that I do remember so being weird, feeling right? that feeling. It was very much just taken from this and you, experience. And you, that, and you get injected right back into it, right? Like You know what, though? I can you, have that, honestly, in like waking memories. Like oh, I yeah. find that when I have memories, a lot of time it's very visceral and I feel like I can almost like smell that moment or like, yeah. you know, I don't know. It's distracting, to be honest. I yeah. wish I could be more present and not be drifting into memories like that. But I do find that I have very like realistic memories interesting not like not that all of them are that way of course there's so much shit i don't remember at all i'm not trying to say i have like a photographic memory or anything but sometimes something will strike you and it's just like all these weird little details come Mm -hmm. through sensory yeah sensorily what's the word there sensorily no that's that's probably no that's that's really interesting you know um speaking of senses excuse me i'm burping from all this beer speaking of senses you uh Smell is like the number one sense that connects you to memory. Did you know that? I believe I did hear that somewhere, so, which is you, quite fascinating. Because I was at, I was in a, um, I'm working at this call center in St. Catharines, and um, which is another part of my career. It's long. I have a long line of jobs that I hated working, and like I, I despised my life because I worked them. So that was one of them. It was terrible. That's funny. and. Kind of uh, funny because that's the season four question is like, what's the worst job you've ever had? Oh, funny. And I read yeah. that it was a telemarketing and that was it. Oh my God. Okay. That was it. So <laughs> it was terrible. And, uh, I was, um, yeah, someone came in in the morning, this guy, Daryl, who worked with me, really nice guy. And he brought in a coffee and, uh, like set it down probably like this far away from me, like just a couple feet. And I smelled it and like instantly I was like transported back to my grandma's living room in the Glebe. Like I was like there in the living room in my mind. And I'm in St. Catharines. She lived in Ottawa and she just passed at this point. I think it's like right after. And I was like literally in her living room, like with the just kind of like orangey gold carpet that she had, like smelling that coffee like the after dinner coffee that she would yeah. always make for people it's so it's weird transported yeah. absolutely it's so, so weird it's very interesting how um smell can it's like a portal to different parts of your mind it's yeah really like i'll i'll have moments and this happens to me a lot of time when i'm like lying in bed trying to fall asleep and you start mm-hmm. sort of drifting off where a memory will come back to me. And sometimes it's like the most trivial, stupid shit. And yet the details I'm getting are so vivid. Like I had a memory the other day about being at this dude's house that I haven't even thought about in fucking years. I wasn't even that good of friends with him, but it was like a sleepover on his birthday. And I I could tell you the layout of this guy's living room. Sure. And I haven't thought about it in 25 years. And the other day it came to me and I knew exactly what I was remembering and where I was. I didn't know why it was so relevant crazy, right? information to me now or why my brain was choosing to pull that up. Yeah. But it was kind of like mind blowing to me just realizing that you think that like memories from a long time ago, especially are these vague, fuzzy, foggy things. And certainly they feel that way a lot of the time, but clearly there is a register component in your brain too, when necessary it's or when so unnecessary, yeah. as in my instance, to just pull this little file out that yeah. is completely documented and you just get this splash of like realism yeah. or whatever. It's, you tap, you tap into it. It's completely. really, really interesting shit that I would love to learn more about. I'd love to have oh. a dream expert on or a memory expert. Yeah. I don't know if there's memory experts. We're manifesting that. For, well, for I can't remember what they're called. Oh, that's a little bit of a memory joke there. Often connected to trauma, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it's, <clears throat> I, I believe you're correct about, you know, the aromas of things bringing yeah. back memories. But often too, when you think about things, especially when you get older, because you had so many things and I forgot so much oh, yeah. stuff. 
uh, except school stuff that I can pull up from university, like nothing. I, I still don't get that. Those are like facts as opposed to, like they are memories, but you're, it's not remembering a place and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And but, but, as, but as far as that stuff, the, the things I can still remember best from early stages of my life often had to do with some associated trauma. Oh, for sure. Mm. You know, you know, like embarrassment asking a girl out or, spikes. Yeah. yeah, all those, yeah. yeah, whatever happens physiologically to you at the shit. time. Yeah. Yeah. It spikes something and that stuff is laid down with some extra flags to say, yeah, get this one in all its gruesome detail so you can yeah, pull it up so later can learn life. from it. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Learn yeah. from it. And unfortunately yeah. it doesn't always work that way, but no, well, trauma is a real, um, interesting yeah puzzle interesting yeah. Pu yeah it's like a tetris like it, it will connect people to horrible things and it literally uh, i've had a lot of friends who, who have been through past traumas past partners too and it can literally just trigger someone to takes them right back like PTSD it takes you right something. back to the, it's total PTSD sort of takes them right back to. It's like happened. a soldier hearing like an engine yeah. backfire and yeah. all of a sudden they're like, holy shit, like, gotta get down. Like you someone know? I know recently, I won't say who, but it was in a car, a car accident. It was very minor. Everything was fine. But um, at the end of it, I went to see them and this person has been through massive trauma in their life. And, um, and I went to, see her and was like hey is everything okay and she just started hugging me and was like couldn't stop saying i'm sorry over and over again like she just kept saying i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and i was like what are you she sorry about hey, you're, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah you're, you're okay but it's a trauma response right so when, when you're taken right back to an incident of younger era or whatever like especially a childhood thing mm. you, you think that you're wrong right you think that what what's happened is because of you you did or something bad. yeah you did bad yeah it was something that you did wrong to make that happen and it's similar thing a, um a friend had a another incident that i won't speak of but she out in um pei it had something happen with the police you just identified her a little bit and she PEI, yeah sorry <laughs> anyways no one will know who it is anyways Sim similar like she called me to sort of tell me what was going on and i was like oh man i'm sorry and before she could finish talking about what she was saying she was like i'm sorry I'm sorry like to me mm. and i was like i don't know you're not well why do you you don't have to be sorry at all but it's like a thing that trauma will do it makes people interesting apologize because they feel like yeah well, so they want to be comforted they want to be comforted and they feel like something they've done in their life has made this happen again crazy too so when bad shit happens they feel like it's because of them damn yeah it's very weird yeah some heavy shit. deep sorry no no not even that's interesting i did not know that but yeah. you know you learn something new every day it's very uh it's very bizarre yeah it's like i think it's called trrt or something like trauma real time trtt trauma real time response acronyms so they're it's fun like, yeah um, oh, actually, I wanted to talk to you because the Man of Steel rap name yeah. got me thinking, well, that's a kind of a nerdy reference. Yeah. And then I saw a post you did the other day where you were wearing a and d shirt, and then you said very funnily, like, don't uh, DM me unless you're a DM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was kind of a fun little... So I want to know if you are a geek. You, I mean, you kind of alluded to that when you were looking yeah. around the room, but what was your sort of geekdom of choice growing up, and do you still play d and I, I don't. I actually played d and for such a short time, this family lived up the street from me named the McLennans and uh, really nice friends. But I've become really good friends with my, my friend Kevin, who's one of my best buddies now. And he, pl he plays D and D he's the same age as me he plays D and D as an adult and he's not a DM, but I've just always been in and around that world. Like my, my experience playing it is so little. That's like me. But, but people have said, they're like, you should be a DM at times. And I was like, it sounds fun. Like I like the creative aspect of D and D like the fact that you're, there are the some improv. rules, but you are, yeah, you're kind of creating this world where there's these different options that people can go down. So I, I can geek out on that. I love Dan Harmon. So he's a huge D and D fan. A lot of people play online too with like a, they do, they roll the die and everyone can see yeah. through zoom or whatever. It's just more convenient not it's, to have to go and gather somewhere. It's wild, man. But my, my geekdom of choice is probably similar to yours. Like not more, not so much comics, but like, you know, Flight of the Concords, comedy, um, music. Like I grew up when 
this dates me more than you, but like my parents had, um, actually your dad would appreciate this, like a, t a typewriter that was very new at the time. One of the, one of like the early typewriters, well, the later typewriters that had like a digital display on it too. Oh, okay. So you could actually read what you were typing digitally as well. Interesting. As, uh, so Probably expensive as fuck. When yeah, it totally. And, um, I would no word of a lie type out the TV guide because I was so obsessed with like knowing what was on different channels. And so hmm. inside of TV guides, your dad would know this too. There's like little channel markers, right? With the parentheses and like 13 and a channel, whatever inside of these parentheses. And then like the show description. So it's like Jason Bateman on. I've um, read a Hogan's. TV guide. I was born in 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, you know, right, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Um, so I would literally just type out a couple pages of like what was in there. And that was like so fun for me, like getting the parentheses right and getting like descriptions perfect. It's like, you know, interesting. Um, what was it? The Hogan family, Jason Bateman on the Hogan family tonight is a new, whatever. Um, tonight's Johnny Carson guest. Like that stuff was so, I don't know. It was just something so like calming about that as a kid. <laughs> I found that as an Super adult nerdy. too, when I do organizational work that it calms yes. my brain and I have OCD. Yeah. So I think sometimes that that's it. It's, it's, it's like a forced compulsion that I'm yep. choosing to do. Totally. And, and it actually works really great at my job at the hospital because I'm just organizing surgical sets. Oh, right. Oh, and cool. they've all got like the places they have to go and the numbers on them to make sure it's the right instrument. And you're also checking for debris and anything else, bio so burden right and all there. that. So yeah. it's really just like nitpicking stuff, but it doesn't, I, I like it. It feels very systematic and, um, yeah. I, yeah, I can excel at that job. I like it. That's cool. I have to, I have to stop again. I'm so sorry. I have to pee really quickly. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, because I got a couple more, but we probably should wrap it up soon, okay. eh? Only because I know you got to get home, but yeah. I know. All right, just give me a quick two Yeah, yeah, not even, we'll of course. Back from the second pee break. Yeah, it was just me to clarify. I'm the only Well, I mean, no one cares how many people peed. We peed. <laughs> We're back. Um, I did want to say about the D&D &D family yeah. that you played with. That the Mick Lennons better have been into the Beatles. <laughs> oh, I don't McCartney know if they Lennon. were. That's a good question. Yeah, that, that's what came, yeah, that's what came to mind when I heard that. The, uh, it's, oh, you it's don't like, actually have to answer if they were no. into the Beatles. No, no, no. It's L-E-N-N-A-N. -L so uh, okay. Lennon, well, then but still. even more. So, yeah. But the no, McCartney yeah, Lennons. That's what I heard. We're talking about amalgamated words earlier. Oh, man. McCartney and Lennon. Yeah. They both influenced a lot of people. Both great. Both very different. Well, even though you're coming back from a pee, we probably should keep it brief because I know we're yeah. doing like we're at two and a half, I think, or something like yeah, that. We've been going a while, so it's been, it's been it's a great a school though. night. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been, been so much fun. You got to come back. Yeah, I will we'll do because sure. uh, I, I hate rushing through questions, but at the same time, weeknight I got to keep. Uh, you know, I know we had so much we've connected on. It's been nice. Yeah, exactly. Really Tangents cool. are the best, and yeah. and when it feels natural like that, like I don't regret a second. No, um, I will ask you what's your weirdest habit. Oh, interesting weirdest habit that like maybe other people might think is a little weird you mean like uh habit like like picking your nose kind of thing or like it could be something like that however nose? you interpret that okay. question i mean don't have to get too personal if it's something you're ashamed of <laughs> weirdest habit um yeah i don't know i think like habitually it's hard to break it down what what you would do that's sort of Weird. Weird, yeah. Well, yeah. Was, well, you give me an example of yours. What's a weird habit for you? Well, I'm OCD, so I have a few things. Okay. But a lot of mine are like the stereotypical, like checking the oven too many times. Oh, and, you do uh, that? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. That's so you're like Jack Nicholson from... Um, not to that extreme, no. That movie? Um, what was that movie called anyways? God. Like locked doors and ovens and stuff. That's just in my mind coming from a safety standpoint. Where Something, I'm like... Something's got to... Someone get, could break no. in or the house could light on fire. That's where my mind goes. As good as it gets. Things. Sorry, remember the movie. Yeah, so he's doing like he, light switches and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to me, I'm like, what's the point of this? Right. Okay. Or the excessive hand washing that I sort of get with the germophobia stuff. But... Oh, yeah. Uh, well, ter okay. terrible question, clearly. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think now. So... Um, Weirdest tab, but it is a, a hard one to I do... Sm I tend to... Um, like I'll I'll check my um, smell constantly, even if I'm not if I'm not, like even if I know I smell the pits, yeah, mean, like or just wherever. Like I just like will smell like I smell my clothes a lot. Like I'll smell my shirt. It's that's just a something, good habit yeah, to have, though. I guess, but it's like I do it to probably to a fault sometimes. Like I'm like eh. you're like why is this guy smelling himself? <laughs> yeah, again? yeah, yeah. Or I actually another thing I do is I like take my I'll take my shirt and and I like kind of like suck on that part of the neck. Oh, okay, thing. yeah. I don't know why. I know it's that's just like, just a like yeah, yeah. Thing that I've done like all my life. It's okay. Bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. 
I did, yeah, weird wasn't meant to be like... Uh, no, but it made me know. think that is one that I've done. It's okay. like, I don't know why. I don't judge that at all, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how could you? There's nothing no. weird about it. Like, I'd be like, why are you sucking your shirt, man? <laughs> no, just why are you sucking off that shirt? Yeah. No, it's true. It's... Uh, yeah, no, not even. I put you on the spot with that Everyone has one. their own peccadillo. And I should have had one ready of mine so that, like... Well, I mean, I guess I just said I'm like that in general, no. but... Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? Okay, well, I, I because I'm sure there's a story here, we will jump to the end of the season question, season four, end of the episode question, I should say. Sure. Um, which is your worst job ever. But I know Ooh. this telemarketing thing in Niagara, someone else said telemarketer too recently. It's a pretty... I remember who it is now, I, but. I mean, I identify, I don't even know who it is that said that, but I identify with them completely. It's just such a terrible, really soul-sucking job. And I think that, you know, if if someone... I don't know. I have yet to meet anyone in life who really loved it. I know people who've done it, but it's just sort of like a patchwork job to get you from, you know, point A to point yeah. B. Like it's like a it's like a stopover. It's sort of like oh, I had to do something to work for a while. This call center was hiring, so yeah, I yeah. did it. So it, it's just very monotonous. I would say, yeah, that point in my life was you know not to get too dark or deep, but that there were other things happening in my life at the time too. But that's probably the closest I've ever been to like thinking about suicide or something wow. like that yeah it was it, it was dark. pretty dark it was awful. no but i appreciate you sharing that yeah that's very vulnerable no, and it was just um and nothing like you know it was just a very niagara to that region like downtown st Catharines in the like early 2000s was just a pretty tough place and um pretty dark and, and just also yeah going to work every day where you would come in and this thing called the queue. So you'd see how many calls were waiting in the queue. So you could see on the phones like, oh, there's 85 people waiting to talk and there's like four agents available. Oh my God. And so you'd see the numbers on the phone when you come in. So it's sort of this idea of like, that's when it occurred to me like, oh, I should really think about doing something that I want to do. Because even if, you know, there's stress and there's things that have to be done that are piling up, like, if you like doing it, that stress is okay. Yeah. Right. It's like you, you have to deal with it. It sucks. You know, sometimes you have to work long hours, but to come into work and there's so much work to be done and you, you fucking hate, hate yeah. everything about and that work. It's the worst for continuing it's to the worst. work there. So I, I really empathize with people who are in jobs and in spots that they, but much like despise. you're saying those shit jobs can sometimes be, that launch pad yeah, for you to realize sure. like I'm better than this shit yeah. and I'm going to figure out a way to prove that. Yeah. Or just not even, yeah, exactly. Not, maybe not even that you're better. It's just like, I got to do what's right. Yeah. Not better, but like, yeah, this isn't for me. That's right. And, and it's this is me. crushing me to continue to That's keep right. like doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it was, it was just really tough. And I mean, you're, you're following a script like on your computer. And so I, I worked with this section of the call center called on call where you would have, literally calls for four or five different companies at any point. So it'd be like, beep, you get a beep in your ear and it'd be like, Levi's. And then the script would pop up on your screen. You'd be like, hi. And you're taking calls for Levi's customers who have problems with their jeans. And then it'd be like, beep, Sony redemption. And your your thing would beep and a script would pop up. And for a while there, there was these um, Sony credit cards in the States where people could get Sony points and then redeem them for Sony products. Yeah. So it's that kind of shit. So you're just constantly like, it's like, um, you know, learning stuff in school that you don't want to learn. Yeah. You have to retain <laughs> for an exam and then you just yeah, dump yeah. it and you never, there's nothing to do with it anymore, right? It's just garbage kind of knowledge. It's just total garbage knowledge, yeah. So it's- That's uh, a good name for a man. Garbage. That's a great garbage. name. Oh, no, yeah. there's already garbage though. Yeah. Yeah, but, but no, garbage <laughs> knowledge would be a great, I'd be a good punk band or something. But yeah, that was really, really hard. Well, that's the darkest answer for sure. Or just yeah. like most honest. Generally, that was kind of perceived to be like a funny question of like, what's yeah. the shittiest job you ever had? But that one was real. Yeah. Was and I mean, really I, I, was going, I was going through a lot of stuff in a past relationship too. And it was just not like serving in any way, like probably either of us. And so I don't think a telemarketing is a very uh, nourishing no. job for your soul really at all. Not. You know, you're very isolating. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm a, I'm a creative person too, and I needed to go through, but yeah, I look back 
And do, do I regret it or do I wish that I hadn't done it? Well, no, because I don't think that I would have been brought to this point. Yeah, it sharpened you in a way. Yeah. yeah. And I think that all experiences that everyone goes through in life, like you're kind of, just like what you said, they're sharp, it's sharpening you. You're being refined yeah. by um, the universe. That's probably the word I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> sharpening, no, I guess that works too. No, but yeah, it's true. And I, I think that, you know, being a creative person, I've had to like work tons and tons of different jobs that are just not creative at yeah. all. And they're run by very feels like a prison. Things. Yeah. And I'd tell them and they're like, so you're a musician, huh? Like, yeah. And they're like, you play uh, shows I'm like, cool. And then that's the end of the conversation, right? It's just like not in their wheelhouse. They're not interested in music at all. They're not, not into it. And so, yeah, it's. I would always find ways to inject creativity into jobs like that. Like I worked at a fun. video store, which granted you get to talk movies with people. So that's already not that bad. Yeah, that's fun. But even still, I would take it further. And like when we had to call people for late fees, I would like do it as like Yoda or Dr. Evil oh, or that's something. Fun. So I'd be like, mm, late your movie is. Oh my God. Return it, you must. Why <laughs> have you not done your your Yoda impression is like perfect. I did that. Uh, actually, was like my first stand-up thing ever. I had a Yoda <laughs> and Kermit, the frog getting high together. Oh, man. I should probably try that again. Yeah, it's been a long time. That's awesome, man. That was um, we got to wrap it though, yeah. but um, I appreciate your time so much. And Dude, part of the reason you. is we were talking about editing before with the new camera that I've had for my dad. I just wanted to say this because I've thought this a few times. It is a lot of fucking work to add it all in because I got to watch the whole episode and then find any spot where he's talking and then go and sync up the... I'm not even going to get into the logistics of that old okay. shitty camera, but it's got a memory card that like after every 20 minutes, it takes like a four second break and then starts a new file. Oh, so getting the, the timing of the sound. But anyways, uh, the long winded point I'm trying to make is there's been a lot of times where I'm editing and then I'm watching you react and you kind of, like I know you know you're being filmed, but you don't. You're probably not cognizant of it the whole time. And I get to see these real, like beautiful, honest laughs. My dad just like <laughs> laughing and like no, like honestly, like seeing That's you just great. like in a moment of joy That's that I'm helping, man. kind of like create or bring us together in that moment and. It's like, I should probably be saying this shit at your funeral or something, but but that's kind of what I almost like think when I see those moments. I'm like, there's going to be a time where you're not going to be here. And this thing that seems like laborious, is that a word? Yeah. yeah. Laborious now to me uh, is probably going to be something that I'm going to treasure later when you're not around. And I'm going to be able to see you just laughing in that moment. And, and it's going to be, you know, I'm going to be glad to have Dude, that footage. Thanks so. for, thanks for no, I wanted to end on thanks a, for on having, a, thanks know. for having me here in this beautiful moment between well, maybe your father and son. That's your music influenced man. me, I guess, man, because I've been listening to you all day and, and oh, researching thanks, for buddy. this episode, and you have uh, a really warm a warmness to your your sound. Oh, and, thanks, bud. And the lyrics complement that as well. So I try. It's not it's not always uh, easy, and like I I want to include people and make people feel welcome, and it's you know it's a it's just something that it it's always come to me a bit naturally but I, I anyways i strive for it it's not always what happens and sometimes i get pissed off and angry and i like go off the rails and uh get deep into myself and i'm insecure and anxious and all that stuff but you know it's uh i've just seen as i'm sure you have too lots of people go uh too soon in life and different things have happened and so i just try to treasure whatever time that i have yeah and make new friends make right? new friends yeah, yeah man absolutely well, yeah this was a long one we'll do it again sometime absolutely, but uh, thanks for having me that's always. it and if anyone's still here at the end thank you for watching all the way through and that's it right on see Cheers. you later i'm sorry about mr joseph <laughs>